Ryan, technician with SafeLight Auto Glass. So you think all auto glass companies are the same? Well, they're not. With SafeLight, you get more. Every windshield we replace is backed by a national lifetime guarantee, keeping you covered wherever you are. Plus, SafeLight has more glass in stock than anyone, so we can get to you faster. Just tell your insurance company you want SafeLight, or call us at 1-800-800-2727, or go to SafeLight.com. Yannick Real Estate is your full-service real estate agency. Buying, selling, residential, commercial, multifamily, land, and rental management. Call Yannick Real Estate. Owner Mike Yannick, a veteran himself, served his country and has been serving this area for decades. Mike and his staff will guide you through the real estate process. Veterans, be sure to check the VA loan options. Yannick Real Estate, your full-service real estate agency, 1232 West Front Street in Berwick. Call 759-3300. The Classic Rock Channel, 103.5. Harry Sporting Goods, a staple in downtown Berwick, in business for over 125 years. Harry Sporting Goods carries a wide variety of sneakers and cleats, now featuring Brooks running shoes. Harry specializes in sneakers and seasonal sporting goods, but also carries work boots and name brands including Nike and Under Armour. Harry Sporting Goods, keeping the tradition alive while keeping up in the new era. Visit them on Facebook or on West Front Street in Berwick. Harry Sporting Goods, hashtag you need new sneakers, proud to support area sports teams. Neighbor Fence Company has fencing for where you want it. Serving Columbia, Montour, and Luzerne counties. Neighbor Fence provides top quality residential and commercial fencing. Vinyl, chain link, wood, aluminum, and ornamental fencing. Plus, vinyl railing and specialty products. Neighbor Fence Company, 1140 State Route 239 in Wapwalpin. Call 570-752-4423 or visit them online at NeighborFenceCompany.com. Neighbor Fence Company is a proud sponsor of local youth athletic teams. When the music stops, that's football. This is Berwick football coach Frank Sheptock. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg, and Greater Hazelton 103.5. Weekend number three of the high school football season kicking off here in West Pittston for the Bulldogs. They take on the Warriors of Wyoming area. And you lick the eye uh, back in our old home, Classic Rock 103.5. But before we go any further, I want to thank very much uh, Chris Kuharski, a class act who runs uh, NEPAfootball.com, and he gave us a platform for which to bring you uh, Berwick football streaming these past two weeks. And we hope you'll, uh, during the course of the season, go to his website uh, very often because it's uh, it's pretty awesome. Well, just four plays into the 2017 season, Wyoming area lost its most valuable player, senior P.J. Angeli, to a season-ending knee injury. Warriors coach Randy Spencer explains the impact of that injury. Uh, PJ is such an outstanding, high-character student-athlete for us, an experienced player, getting his four-year starter uh, at quarterback and, and, and safety, uh, also at some other skill positions. Um, guy evaluated and projected to go play on the next level in college. And, um, you know, also an established leader of our team, you know, a veteran leader, um, genuinely respected uh, by all his teammates, voted captain almost unanimously. And um, so when someone like that goes down uh, in our first game and fourth play of the game, again, like everybody feels that. Uh, everybody's, uh, you know, heartbroken. You know, hopefully you're with, you're hoping for the best. Unfortunately, in PZA's case, was a evaluated into torn ACL and he's lost for the season but again he's such a great kid uh, from a leadership standpoint uh, he's going to give us uh, you know as much as as he can uh, uh, being off the field as opposed to on and uh, we certainly hope for his speedy recovery uh, so as much as it's it's negative and heartbreaking uh, you know, we're, we're hoping that we can turn that into a positive for us going forward and I know PJ will, will do whatever he can to, to do to, to accommodate that. Well, as a result of that tough injury, uh, sophomore Dominic DeLuca has been forced into the starting roles, the, the quarterback. And looking at his numbers through the first two games, he's done okay, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, very solid, especially in the first game. Uh, uh, Dominic, even admittedly, uh, not sure he was prepared for, for that situation, as none of us w would have been, however, uh, had done a great job as a, a young guy. And as you're, when you're that second guy, like, Again, you have to take mental reps and, and, and learn from watching. And a lot of students, you know, a lot of uh, players are tasked to do that. And, and but the, you know, until it, you find out, you maybe haven't done the best job of that. Dominic certainly had the, has made the most of you know his preparation prior uh, to getting the call. And then once he got the call, he managed our first game. 
very effectively. No turnovers. Made some 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 key throws, and uh, you know we're, we're able to execute uh, and and not turn the ball over and, and be effective win that game. And then going into last week, uh, coming out and being markedly improved, uh, had an opportunity actually <clears throat> connected on three uh, scoring throws and, and and had a long scramble. Unfortunately, that was called called back. But again extremely effective managing the game, uh, making key throws, expanding on uh, performance from the week before, uh, uh, solidifying his ability to, to make throws and make plays and, and, and you know run the offense. And uh, also on the defensive side of the ball, being solid from a safety position, both games covering and tackling well and, and, and moving in also to the starting punting role and uh, did a great job and at one point uh, had a nice punt that pinned uh, Crestwood back on their one. So I can't ask for more uh, from from Dominic DeLuca. He certainly has done a great job and very promising going forward. Well, your team has uh, split a pair of very, very competitive games, and now you face uh, arguably the best team that uh, you played so far in Berwick. They're off to a great start. What concerns you about them? Uh, Obviously, athletes and, and, and playmakers all over the field um, you have to look at Alex Force in a similar position, uh, although with a little bit more uh, uh, time in terms of preparation. But uh, as far as execution as a young guy, and, and, and you know, I, as far as a starting role, uh, or at least this season, starting this season, coming in and being able to execute, certainly the playbook uh, the first two weeks for Berwick has not been <clears throat> minimized. He's, uh, again, been able to make all the plays. Uh, given them their full complement of offense and executed at a high level. Um, you add to that uh, Evan Klingler, very uh, hard-nosed, um, intense player, uh, downhill runner, You know, can make plays in space as well, both sides of the ball. And then uh, that dynamic uh, athlete that kind of moves around and does a lot of different things, uh, Beckhorn, who uh, you know can come across on the jet sweep and affect you and uh, you know, also make vertically out out in space, out on the edge. Uh, so again, uh, that spread offense uh, being executed very well, and uh, the skill guys complementing each other, and up front having enough uh, again to run the ball effectively and do what they need to do. So you know, obviously defense uh, that's that scheme from a scheme standpoint and an athlete standpoint of a good football team uh, off to a good start. We certainly have to try to do what we can to stem stem momentum early and then and, and be aggressive when we can and uh, you know hopefully give us an opportunity there and defensively same thing athletes on the back end I think their safeties especially do a great job I think weak a number seven is, is a safety along with Klingler this year playing that position that you know he's off in uh, bracket coverage then he's back up in the box driving down on the runs and so it looks like their space and then they close it down really quick and uh, just scheme-wise and, and running to the ball-wise, all their athletes through their skill sets. Um, you know, they've done a great job executing. That's, I think, uh, primarily, uh, you know, attributed to their, their strong start. Um, and, again, as always, uh, we look forward to the challenge of competing against um, Berwick. We we're highly competitive games. Um, we have a lot of respect, and we also have, uh, you know, a lot of uh, passion in terms of, you know, being in a big game, especially – with Berwick and it's our home opener so you know hopefully we're going to be in a, a situation where we're, we're ready to complete at Pete at our highest level. Wyoming area head coach Randy Spencer a Wyoming area grad of 1988 now in his 10th season after 16 as an assistant to Paul Marenke here at the school his record uh, dead even 50 wins 50 losses they had suffered through three straight three and seven seasons but then that breakthrough last year nine and three making it to the district semifinals. Uh, Wyoming area won a district title in 2012 in class double A under Randy Spencer. His team comes in this game with a one and one record, a 7-3 win over Walla Paulpack, a 21-18 loss last week at Crestwood. This is the first home game of the season for the Warriors. Wyoming area against Berwick will check the starting lineups when we return. You're listening to Bulldogs football and classic rock 103.5. Hogs Hollow Saloon has rolled out the new menu in their daily special. Hogs Hollow Mondays, Clam Night. Hogs Hollow Tuesday, Slider Night. Hogs Hollow Wednesday, Wing Night and Boston Fisher Homemade Pierogi. Hogs Hollow Thursday, 995 Half Rack of Ribs and Chef's Dinner Choice. Hogs Hollow Friday, Poor Man's Lobster and Prime Rib. Hogs Hollow Saturday, Seafood Pasta and Sunday, Chicken and Waffles. Drink specials include the Orange Crush. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Hogs Hollow Saloon, Route 93 in Berwick and Orangeville. Find specials on Facebook. 
the Mayo Funeral Homes, located at 110 Chestnut Street in Berwick and 77 Main Street in Shikshini, are proud sponsors of Berwick Bulldog Football. The Mayo Funeral Homes, serving all faiths, makes it easier for those you love with prearranged funeral counseling, insurance, and pre-financed funerals. Mayo Funeral Homes also offers expert guidance in both traditional and cremation services. Mayo Funeral Homes, perfection in every detail. 103.5, the classic rock channel. Anderson Ice Company, located on the corner of 2nd Street and Oak Street in Berwick, has been serving Berwick and the surrounding community since 1975. Anderson Ice keeps you cool and your beverages cooler with cubed, crushed, or block ice. Anderson Ice is now offering dry ice upon request. Be sure to visit your local convenience store and stock up on Anderson Ice before any family celebration or holiday. Anderson Ice Company, on the corner of 2nd Street and Oak Street in Berwick. Reds Roofing, the roofing ninjas of Berwick, are your roofing experts for Luzerne, Columbia, and Montour counties. With 26 years of experience and great rates, why go anywhere else when Red's Roofing will get the job done right for your decks, siding, or roofing? Specializing in metal and rubber shingles, most roofing work is done in one day. So remember the name, Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas. Call Red's Roofing, 752-4351. Owner Harry Titus, a proud supporter of the Berwick football team. When the music stops, that's football. This is Berwick football coach Frank Sheptock. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg, and Greater Hazelton 103.5. It's a great weather night here in West Piston for weekend number three of the high school football season to kick off. Bulldogs of Berwick going against the Warriors of Wyoming area. 25th meeting between these two schools. Berwick leads the series 19 to five. As I mentioned uh, earlier, they split a couple of games in the in the 2016 season. Wyoming area winning impressively at Crispin Field on week three, and Berwick winning even more impressively here to go into the semifinals of the District Two Quad A playoffs. Here's the starting lineup offensively for the Bulldogs. The tight end, number 11, Joe Norse, 6'3", 185, a senior. couple of catches for 38 yards on the season. Had a nice 35-yard grab in that win over Dallas last week at Crispin Field. The left tackle, number 72, Ben Peck, 6'3", 251, a junior. Tom Monaco starts a left guard. He wears number 73, the only returning starter from a year ago on that offensive front. 6'3", 284 pounds, a senior. Starting center is a sophomore, Noah Craig, number 79. Six foot, 246 pounds. Fellow sophomore Mike Zalutko is the starting right guard. He wears number 71, 6'1", 264 pounds. The right tackle is a senior. He wears number 70. He is Chase Struther, a 6'3", 294 pound senior. Berwick blessed with a number of talented wide receivers, including their leading receiver through the first two games, number 14, Damon Beckhorn. Six foot, 181 pound senior, 11 receptions on the season for 139 yards and two touchdowns. Jared Watts, number 13, has four catches on the season. He's a 5'10, 167 pound senior. The quarterback, number two, Alex Force, 6'2, 162 pound junior, filling in for the injured Jared Marshman, and Force has done a terrific job. He's completing over 60% of his passes for 282 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. And he's also carried the ball effectively, averaging five yards a carry on nine attempts. At the running back spots, Berwick will use two. Evan Klinger and Owen Shoemaker both have been effective so far. Klinger, the 5'10", 175-pound senior, 149 yards and two touchdowns to date, averaging five yards a carry. And Shoemaker, 5'9", 191-pound junior, 25 carries, 117 yards, averaging 4.7 yards a carry, and he had a touchdown in that win against Dallas last week. When Berwick does deploy a fullback, we'll see Joey Lynn, number 44, 5'11", 216-pound junior. Also might see Eric Montez, a 6'1", 195-pound sophomore. That's the starting lineup offensively for the Bulldogs under... Frank Sheptock in his second season as head coach. Berwick comes in with a 2-0 record, 24-10 over Hazleton area, 23-7 over Dallas. Bulldogs averaging 23.5 points per game, 
They'd like more than that. They've hurt themselves with penalties. In fact, 12 in the Dallas game alone. Six in the first outing against Hazleton area. Burlick with a pretty good balance running and passing. 152.5 yards rushing a game, 141 yards passing. For Wyoming area, they'll use a couple of tight ends. One is number 15, Shane Eslick. He is a 6'1", 180-pound senior. One reception so far for 15 yards. Derek Ambrosino is another tight end. He wears number 11. He's a sophomore. There's a number of sophomores in this uh, starting lineup for Wyoming area. Ambrosino is 6'2", 185 pounds. The left tackle is number 73, Damon Barheit. He is 6'2", 245 pounds, a senior. Michael Amato starts at left guard. He's a junior, 5'9", 200 pounds. Starting center, Stephen Sokash Minnick, number 69, a 6'2", 200-pound junior. Cameron Carr starts at right guard. He's 6'4", 200 pounds, a junior. And the right tackle, Matt Wykonski, number 76, 6'3", 275 pounds, a junior. So with the exception of that right tackle, Wykonski, this is not a big lineup, probably one of the smaller offensive lines the Bulldogs will face this season. But it wasn't much bigger if it was at all a year ago when they ran the ball so effectively against Berwick, particularly in the first meeting. Wyoming area has a great target in number 10, Mark Anthony Minichello. He is 5'10", 180 pounds, a senior, and he has been the focus of Berwick's preparation in this one. He leads the Wyoming Valley Conference in receiving 13 catches, 138 yards, and two touchdowns. He caught touchdown passes of 64 and 8 yards in that game against Crestwood last Friday night. So Minichello will be the focus of Berwick's defense. We'll also see a talented sophomore in Brian Williams, number 6, a 6'1", 180-pounder. The quarterback, another sophomore, Dominic DeLuca, 6'1", 170 pounds. We mentioned earlier he took over in the first game when uh, the veteran P.J. Angeli was injured four plays into the game, four plays into the 2017 season. DeLuca played okay against Wallenpawpak and even better against Crestwood last week when he threw for three touchdown passes. On the season, 48% of his passes complete, 178 yards, three touchdowns, and very important for a newcomer, no interceptions. The leading rusher on this team, Darren Rodney. He saw a lot of action last year as a freshman. Six foot, 175 pound sophomore. 30 carries for 118 yards and a touchdown. Last week, he had 79 yards rushing against Crestwood. Also caught an eight yard touchdown pass from Dominic DeLuca. We'll see a number of people at the fullback spot, including number 47, Justin Joseph, a senior. 5'8, 190 pounder. Seven carries so far for 22 yards. And Corey Maruk, he's a 5'8", 180-pound sophomore. Had a 46-yard run against Crestwood last week. On the season, seven carries for 59 yards, averaging over eight yards a carry. And another wide receiver position, Robert Trattini wears number 17. He is six foot, 170 pounds, a senior. That's the starting lineup offensively for the Warriors of Wyoming area under Randy Spencer in his 10th year as head coach. They come in one and one. They beat Wall and Paul back in their opener 7-3. They lost to Crestwood 21-18. Both those games on the road. This, their home opener here at Jake Sebesky Stadium here tonight. The Warriors against the Bulldogs. Keys to tonight's game, Andy Lickney. Well, Jim, after listening to you, we seem to have the same read on this team. I, too, feel they need more points. Uh, too many times uh, they've shot themselves in the foot. They need to be explosive, but not an explosive way of shooting yourself in the own foot, limiting the penalties. Uh, you detailed it, six penalties against Hazel, and they're all 15-yarders, and 12 against Dallas. That continues to put you in that uh, second and 15, third and 20 type of situation. So you have to avoid backward plays, and you have to avoid penalties. Uh, that That's one big part of it. I think also they want some explosive touchdowns, and I think uh, we're going to see a few new wrinkles as they announce the starting lineup. We heard the mention of Tegan Wilk at wide receiver, sort of a late change in addition. We've seen the spark that he has given the defense and the uh, energy he's shown on punt returns. Uh, They might give him a look at wide receiver. They might use him as a decoy. The other thing is Damon Beckhorn, uh, one of the most explosive players in the conference. You've got to get him more touches. Frank Sheptock's aware of that. 
He says they have a series in where he's planning to have him touch the ball quite a bit, whether it's Wildcat, whether he's at halfback, whether they you know give him touches in the reversing game. They, uh, they do plan to use his talents a little bit more. So uh, a little more explosion for a few more points. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. You're right around 24 points a game, but you want more. You want more. There's been too many negative plays. Uh, defensively, I think you have to control Mark Anthony Minichiello. You mentioned his ability. Compare him to an Evan Klinger, sort of a do-all type of guy. Uh, actually, more like a Damon Beckhorn. He plays the wide receiver position. They throw to him. They'll reverse to him. He has a number of uh, runs on the course of the season. Seven touches as a running back. So keep your eye on him. He's the, the quickest way for them to get the points. And you also mentioned, uh, watch the development of Dominic DeLuca. Uh, they have to start game planning with his specific talents in mind. They weren't able to do it in the opener because he wasn't expected to be playing. Added a little bit last week. Expect them to have added a little bit more. And that surprise could hurt Berwick because you just don't know what's coming. You don't know what to uh, prepare for. Well, you mentioned this game being played on uh, natural grass. Only the first of two times the Bulldogs will have that experience this year. A couple of weeks from now, they'll be going to Pittston area. Everything else is the artificial turf, but the field in great shape. We mentioned this is the home opener for uh, Wyoming area, and they don't practice on this field. So, you know, they got some rain during the course of this week. They got some rain earlier this afternoon. It should be in, in great shape for this game. As we see the captains going out to the center of the field, and of course, among the captains for Wyoming area, wearing that uh, brace on his right knee, P.J. Angeli. And, boy, you got a, got a feel for seniors in particular who miss a, a season with injury because if it were college you'd red shirt get that year back but in the high school uh it, it's over he, we understand yeah. he's an excellent student uh randy spencer their head coach told us that uh, a lot of schools are looking at him the academic type schools uh, princeton has indicated uh that they're interested in him and they they reached out to him even after the injury to let them know that they're still interested which is which is great on their part i'm sure made made him feel better but uh knowing the competitor he is i'm sure that uh he will go through the the rehab and do everything he can to be ready for his college season but he could just be a a moral help to his yep. uh, his team this year he's he's out there he's got the jersey on and uh he has to be proud of a sophomore dominic deluca and the way he has performed so far, they've really gotten a lot of uh, good looks out of the sophomore, whose brother, Dante, was an excellent uh, tight end for this team a year ago. Berwick against Wyoming area. We'll be back with the kickoff. You're listening to Bulldogs Football and Classic Rock 103.5. Choose with confidence. Medicine shop. At the Medicine Shop Pharmacy located at the corner of 9th and Pine Streets in Berwick, caring goes beyond the prescriptions. Discover the one-on-one -on -one customer service and dedication that makes caring part of the culture at the Medicine Shop in Berwick. Stock up on everything you need to keep you and your family healthy all year long. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy, located on the corner of 9th and Pine Streets in Berwick, where caring goes beyond the prescriptions. The Mayo Funeral Homes, located at 110 Chestnut Street in Berwick and 77 Main Street in Shikshini, are proud sponsors of Berwick Bulldog Football. The Mayo Funeral Homes, serving all faiths, makes it easier for those you love with prearranged funeral counseling, insurance, and pre-finance funerals. Mayo Funeral Homes also offers expert guidance in both traditional and cremation services. Mayo Funeral Homes, perfection in every detail. When the music stops, that's football. This is Berwick football coach Frank Sheptock. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg, and Greater Hazelton 103.5. Just about set to go with high school football tonight from Jake Sebesky Stadium in West Pittston. Bulldogs about to go against the Warriors of Wyoming area. 25th meeting between the two schools as we get set to kick off weekend number three of the high school football season. The officiating crew for tonight's game, Jay Rowan is the referee. The umpire is Frank Galicki. Jeff Casella is the linesman. Bill White is the line judge. Chuck Hannon 
is the field judge, and the side judge is Frank McCabe. Berwick's going to get the football to start this game. They'll be moving from our left to our right as we view things. I tell you what, you have to keep up with my description of the weather for this game because it changes every two yeah. minutes. I talked about how gorgeous it was just moments ago. Now there's some real ominous clouds over, and I wouldn't be surprised if we get a little more rain before it's all over. Heavy cumulus, I don't know. And we've had basically a drizzle and then a heavier drizzle. People driving up this area talked of coming through some very strong showers. So the field hasn't suffered that today. But as you said, it could change from moment to moment. While there is sun and lots of blue skies and patches, some thick clouds coming in as well. Sophomore Frank Brasidi will kick off our Wyoming area. Berwick will receive and move from our left to our right in this opening quarter. Tegan Wilk, Evan Klinger, Alex Parks, all deep for Berwick. Not very deep. Lined up on the 15-yard line. Brasini on the year, just one PA teammate. May not be a strength of the team where they don't go with that many kicking uh, snaps. Brasini gets the official signal, gets the kick away, and Klinger will field at the 15-yard line. To the 20, Evan Klinger comes to the right side, to the 25, bounces away from a tackler, gets by another one, and returns out to the 37-yard line. Nice job by Evan Klinger. Dimitri DiPietro among the people in on the stop for Wyoming area, but good second effort by Klinger. And Berwick will set it up. They'll be going against the Wyoming area 5-2 defense that lines up with Cameron Carr, Damon Barheit, Jesse Segulka, Justin Joseph, and Shane Eslick across the front. The linebackers, Corey Maruk and Frank Brasini. The corners, Robert Trattini and Brian Williams. The safeties, Dominic DeLuca and Darren Rodney. Keegan Wilk and Damon Beckhorn, both on the left side to start, Jim. A dangerous duo out there at wide receivers. Line of scrimmage is the Berwick 37. Snap is a good one. Back to throw his force. Fires over the middle incomplete. Overshot his mark. The tight end, Joe Norse. Dominic DeLuca from a safety position did get a hand on. Could bring it down. Yeah, but safety was there. Joe Norse saw he wasn't going to get it. He noticed safety was kind of lurking, and he almost... Uh, didn't go full extension, afraid he'd take a shot in the ribs by not even tipping that ball. He let it float out there to the safety, who almost had a play. Wide receiver to either side, out of the pistol. Force gives the ball to Klinger. Big hole at the right side. Clear over midfield. Clinger still on his feet to the Wyoming area 42-yard line. Oh, that offensive line opened up a gaping hole for Evan Klinger. Dimitri DiPietro made the stop for Wyoming area. But a big game for Klinger, first and 10, Bulldogs at the Warrior 41. Roughly 20 yards, you'll have to add that one up specifically, Jim. 22 on the carry by Evan Klinger, who gets the call again, again off the right side, has room, and gets close to another first down. Now to the 31-yard line, Shane Eslick makes the stop from his defensive end position. They mark it at the 32, a pickup of nine, second and one, and Berwick quickly to the line of scrimmage. Frank Sheptock hadn't been uh, pleased with the development of the young offensive line. He wanted them to improve and do more. On these two running plays, they've opened up huge holes for Evan Klinger. And now two fullback types in the game, Joey Lynn and Eric Montez. Montez actually a tight end to the right, and he comes in motion to the left. Second and one, and the snap goes over the head of Force, who goes back to the 45 to recover it. it. Was not necessarily a bad snap. Force was not expecting it. No one was. I noticed that the center flinched, and I was waiting for a flag, and I think what he just did is continue the motion after the flinch with the early snap. It went a little high. If uh, the quarterback was expecting it, he might have been able to jump, but as it is, a loss of 13 yards. Second down and 14 for Berwick. Make it third down and 14 at the Wyoming area 45. Wyoming area showing blitz. Officials stop play. We're going to have a timeout called by Berwick. 10-19 to go in a scoreless first quarter. You're listening to Berwick Football and Classic Rock 103.5.
Anderson Ice Company, located on the corner of 2nd Street and Oak Street in Berwick, has been serving Berwick and the surrounding community since 1975. Anderson Ice keeps you cool and your beverages cooler with cubed, crushed, or block ice. Anderson Ice is now offering dry ice upon request. Be sure to visit your local convenience store and stock up on Anderson Ice before any family celebration or holiday. Anderson Ice Company, on the corner of 2nd Street and Oak Street in Berwick. When the music stops, that's football. This is Berwick football coach Frank Sheptock. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bluesburg, and Greater Hazelton 103.5. Back to action following the Berwick timeout. Bulldogs third and 14. They have it at the Wyoming area, 45-yard line. Alex Force has the shotgun snap. He's back to throw. Looking, looking. Now he's going to run with the football. He's inside the 40. Jukes the defender. He gets to the 35-yard line. So they needed 14. They picked up eight. Fourth and six. Corey Maruk made the stop for the Warriors. I think you'll see Berwick go for it here. They're on the 35-yard line heading in, so it will be a play from scrimmage. No one open downfield, minimal pass rush. He stepped up, saw that the linebackers were deep, tried one last juke, but couldn't escape it to get to the chains. Joey Lynn and Eric Montez come in. Montez, the tight end of the right. Lynn is a fullback. Montez now shifts to a tight end position on the left side. Here comes Beckhorn in motion. Takes the handoff, sweeping that left side, looking for room. Gets by one man, and then he has stood up at the 35-yard line. Good defensive work across the way. Dominic DeLuca among the people in on the stop from his safety position. So Berwick had things going. They had a second and one to 32, but then the miscommunication on the snap sets it behind the chains, and Wyoming area will get the football at their 35-yard line with 9.28 to go in a scoreless first quarter. This Berwick defense, which has been so good so far. Joe Norris and Jimmy Legrand at the ends. Ben Peck and Tom Monaco at the tackles. J.J. Snyder is the nose. Joey Lynn and Noah Craig, the senior, the linebackers. Damon Beckhorn and Alex Parks are the corners. Evan Klinger and Tegan Wilk are the safeties. Toss sweep to the left side. Domenichello and his defense very, very well. Tegan Wilk coming from the secondary to make the tackle. They try to get it to Mark Anthony Minichello in as many ways as they can. Very dangerous, but he will lose the yard back to the 35-yard line, second down and 11. Alex Parks actually coming up and wrapping him for the loss, so coming up from cornerback, making a play behind the line of scrimmage. Outstanding work. Slot to the left side, eye formation. Darren Rodney is the tailback in the eye. He gets the call, looks for some room, hit hard by Noah Craig. Bounces away for maybe a yard or two on the play. Craig, a 5'9", 195-pound senior, filled that hole very, very well. A two-yard pickup, third down and nine. Wyoming area at their 37. Yeah, but Darren Rodney hit that hole hard, bounced Craig back. But Berwick has team defense, and everyone sort of closing in and surrounding that. So while Craig gets into the big part of the collision, everyone else finishes it off. Double slot formation. DeLuca out of the gun. Back to throw. Big pass rush. He's going to be sacked back at the 25-yard line. Damon Beckhorn on a corner blitz, Jim. Coming hard. Comes on. He can make plays on defense as well as on offense. And that's a huge loss of about 10, 11 yards. Third down and 20 for Wyoming area. They lost 11 on that play. And Dominic DeLuca will be back to do the punting. Steven Sokash Minnick does the long snapping. As DeLuca back at his 14 yard line. Snap is a good one. The kick is away, a low line drive to the far side of the field. Tegan Will will let it roll. There's good coverage by the Warriors. will go dead about the Berwick 37 yard line. Well, you can almost read the body language in Tegan Wilk. Should I or shouldn't I? He felt he could pick it up. It was just kind of rolling easily along the ground. But rather than stop that roll three or four yards upfield and maybe advancing it for one or two, he plays it safe, lets it roll to its conclusion, and not risk the fumble. Seven minutes, 30 seconds to go in this opening quarter. Burley tried to go to 3 0 in the season. Another area team tried to go to 3 0 Central Columbia. They are leading at Tawanda tonight by a score of 7-0. 
Of course, the Blue Jays, coached by former Berwick assistant Scott Dennis. Bulldogs, second possession, first and ten from the 37. Force out of the gun. In motion comes Beckhorn. The call goes straight ahead to Klinger. He's got good running room, and he's out to the 44-yard line. And he's so far, and we're early, but Berwick's offensive line winning the battle of the trenches. Yes, they are. In the previous series, they came off the right side behind Mike Zolutko. This time off the left behind Tom Monaco. Second and three. Bulldogs at their 44 out of the pistol. Klinger's behind force, gets the snap, gives to Klinger, tries the left side, has room over midfield to the 45. Down that far side by 35. DeLuca brings him down across the way near the 20 yard line of Wyoming area. So they've been getting a lot of good yardage off the right side. That time it was Klinger off the left, all the way to the Warrior 21 yard line. 35 yards on the carry. Off left tackle and broke to the sideline hard. Tegan Wilk downfield blocking helped set up the the extra 15 yards on that run. And most coaches will tell you any long run usually involves a block or two from wide receivers. As the call goes to Klinger again, this time the Warriors close quickly and he'll get the yard maybe two on the on the play. Damon Barheit Six foot, 245 pounds senior in on the play. They mark it the 20, just a yard, second and nine, Berwick. Go and Shoemaker now in, Jim. Give Evan Klinger a little breather. Shoemaker, the lone running back, a fake to him. Force fires over the head of the intended receiver, Joey Lynn, at the 20 yard line. So now it'll be third and nine, Berwick, from the Warrior 20. But they're in fourth down territory, so two plays to get to the chains. Not an automatic pass, likely, but you could choose to run this the way Burroughs has been sort of gashing through this defense. Now you're in four down territory if you don't have Ken Marshman as your place kicker. That's true, too. <laughs> Here we go. Third down and nine. Beckhorn now gets the snap out of the Wildcat, and Beckhorn has some running room, and Beckhorn is inside the fifth. He'll be a couple yards short of the first down. That time, David Beckhorn came on, took the direct snap. He picked up seven. Fourth down and two, Berwick, at the Wyoming area, 13. A short two. Berwick still, though, in shotgun, but I think likely to run. Shoemaker is the running back. Owen Shoemaker gets his first call tonight, looking for the first down yardage off the left side. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't think so. He uh, kind of tripped up. No one really squared up and brought him down. He ran into a, a lineman who was kind of standing, trying to push off somebody. They didn't get the push, and he went down. Actually lost a yard in the play, back to the 14-yard line. So Berwick, two possessions, both into Wyoming area territory, but they come away with nothing on the board. 5.54 to go in a scoreless opening quarter. So the Warriors, from their 14-yard line, backs at an open set. DeLuca gives off the right side, and Joseph picks up a yard, maybe two, on the play. Real nice tackle by Joe Linnett, linebacker. He read the play well, shot through to his left in the seam that opened. Made that as a one-yard uh, gain, and that's a win for the defense. Second down and nine, Wyoming area at their own 15-yard line. Warriors playing their home opener, trying to get their second win of the season. Lost a tough one last week to Crestwood, 21-18. Rodney is the tailback in the eye. He gets the call off the right side. Darren Rodney has some running room over the 30, out to the 32-yard line. Noah Craig, linebacker, wasn't in position to make the tackle, but he reached back to the inside, slowed it down. And then Berwick's pursuit brought it. That'll be a good five, six-yard gain on that setting up a third and relatively short. Corey Maruk, who had a long run against Crestwood last week, checks into that uh, offensive backfield. Linebacker, fullbacker type in Maruk. Replaces Justin Joseph. Here is a third down and three for the Warriors, looking for their initial first down of this quarter. As the call goes to Maruk, up the gut, and he will not get there. Get the number. I think it was Joey Norris. Yes, it was. Slid on in. The fullback, the up back, tries to dive over his left guard. 
and the defensive end on the defensive right slides on down and meets him at the line of scrimmage. Sets up a punt in my mind, and it will be a punt. Fourth and two for Wyoming area. Their own 22-yard line. Damon Beckhorn, Evan Klinger, deep anticipating the punt by DeLuca, who's standing back at the Warrior 10. Good snap. May have been partially blocked as Alex Parks came in there. Looked like he may have gotten a hand on it. Goes out of bounds at the Warrior 35-yard line. He's six foot 176, and he's been uh, toying with blocking punts throughout the season. Came in almost untouched from the right side. I thought the punter had enough time to get it off. He may have shanked it. It may have been flicked. He'd have to check instant replay. In any case, Berwick will set up its offense on the Wyoming area, 35-yard line. So Alex Parks, at the very least, made Dominic DeLuca uncomfortable getting that kick off, and the Bulldogs with a great opportunity. First and 10 at the Wyoming area, 35-yard line. Third time in this opening quarter. They've been in Wyoming area territory, but no score in the game. 3.58 remaining, and that snap goes yeah. through uh, Alex Force's hands, but flags and whistles before it happened. I don't know. Uh, two men shifted and were setting up when the, sh the snap came back. Uh, Berwick obviously didn't have both men set, so the snap had to come early. Now, whether they call for it with a certain sound or a clap or some timing, but it's been the second early snap that's caused trouble for Berwick, and it sets them up in that handicap situation where you lose yardage, this time by penalty. First and 15 from the Wyoming area, 40. Tegan Wilk wide to the right, slot to the left. Alex Force out of the gun. Noah Craig with a good snap. Long down the far side, incomplete. Intended for Damon Beckhorn. Good coverage downfield by Robbie Trentini, a senior, 6'170 pounder, right there with Damon Beckhorn. Second and 15 Bulldogs from the Warrior 40. Berwick's had success when it gets its plays off in the running game, but 0 for 3 in the passing game so far. And some uh, missed opportunities with early snaps that have set them back. Beckhorn wide right. Wilk wide left. Montez shifts to a tight end position on the left. Here comes Beckhorn in motion. Fake to him. Flags fly as the call goes straight ahead to Evan Klinger, and he goes nowhere as he's brought down by Frank Brasini, sophomore at the 40. Jay Rowan, the referee, checking with a member of his staff to see the call. I'm puzzled. <laughs> Game from where the linesman was, but I thought well after the snap. Motion call against Motion. Berwick back to the 45-yard line. and We mentioned the one big negative for the Bulldogs through the first two weeks of the season, penalties. And they're already bothering them here in this first half. Now, they will decline that penalty because it'll bring up third and 15 Berwick at the Wyoming area 40. Beckhorn legally in motion. Someone else must have moved, which would then create an illegal motion if someone like the tight end broke his stance. Slot to the right, Beckhorn wide left. Third and long Bulldogs. Force out of the gun, has the snap. Back to throw. Fires over the middle. The ball is cut by Tegan Wilk. Down at the 22-yard line for first down. There is a flag on the play. At the line of scrimmage thrown by the linesman. Someone in the neutral zone. Someone breaking the stance. We'll see. Illegal receiver downfield against Berwick, Jim. Lineman too aggressive. Drop back passing from the shotgun. Uh... You know, in the spirit of the game, I don't think they're going to confuse some 250-pound lineman with being out for a pass, you know, when you drive your man that extra yard past the line of scrimmage. Uh, and, you know, the reason you don't allow for linemen downfield is that you might mistake them for receivers. In that case, it wasn't going to happen. But by rule, if that man is past the line, it's a little too far, you take that play away. Yes. Very nice catch by Tegan Wilk and a beautiful throw by Alex Force. Penalty erases an 18-yard pickup. Now third and long, back to throw. It's Force, he's going to be sacked back at the 45-yard line. Shane Eslick coming in from his defensive end position. 
gets the sack on Alex Force. Loss of 10, punt team on for Berwick. You're out of rhythm. Yeah, you stay out of rhythm. Penalties and movements, two people at one time, early snaps. Uh, a play that goes for big yardage, 17, 18 yards, called back because of alignment creeping downfield, and all of a sudden the momentum's changed. Wyoming area goes for the throat with the blitz and gets there. They've overloaded the left side. They may be coming to block this one, Jim. Alex Sherkuski back to punt, standing back in his 32-yard line. Alex Force, the high snap. Sherkuski's going to have to run with the football. He gets to the 45 and to the 46-yard line, and that's all. The snap was high. Sherkuski didn't feel that he could get it off against the rush, so he got what he could. It's just a couple. Justin Joseph then brings him down. A great chance for Wyoming area. So they take over in the Berwick side of the 50 at the 47. Scanning the field, he should have seen the overload. And even though he had to run to his left, I thought maybe he can just stop and pooch that. But, uh, easier said from up here than from down on the field as a right-footed punter running to his left. It's a challenge. 2.29 to go in a scoreless first quarter. Direct snap to the quarterback, DeLuca, who tries the right side, looking for running room, and not much there. Berwick very, very tough against the rush. J.J. Snyder from his nose position, making the play. They'll give him three to the 44-yard line of the Bulldogs, second down and seven. This offense wants to take a bit of the cue. Uh, where Berwick's been back on its heels with its own mistakes and then some aggressive plays by Wyoming area. They want to catch up to that rhythm offensively now and make something happen with momentum on its side. Second and seven, Warriors moving from our right to our left. They have it at the Berwick 44-yard line. Brian Williams wide to the right. Mark Anthony Minichello to the left and a quick out to Minichello. He tries to evade a tackler and cannot. Alex Parks with a terrific tackle went right down the ankles of Minichello and made the play. So the completion will lose three. Back to the 47, third down and 10. We talked how strong this secondary is. You can take it as a unit. You can take it by the individuals. Alex Park with two or three big plays already in the course of this quarter. We've seen it earlier in the season. We see it again. Extremely athletic in that nice rangy frame. Tough to throw on him. Here is a third down and 10 from the Berwick 47. DeLuca fires a quick out to the other side of Minichello who lose more yardage as Jimmy Legrand makes the play from his defensive end position. Well, you heard Frank Sheptock. He listened to the interview on Dogs.com this week say uh, bells and whistles should go off on his defense every time Minichello touches the ball. Boy, they were certainly going off on that possession because he'll lose six there. Fourth down, the punt team on. Yeah, it's like Minichello's number 10 is a red jersey wherever he goes and flashing lights. Great awareness, people attacking him, knowing where he is on the field. DeLuca back to do the punting. Standing back at the 35-yard line. Snap is a good one. Kick is away. Beauty. Oh, high. High. Very, very high. Wilk will let it bounce. Oh. And then he tries to pick it up, and the ball is loose, and the scramble is on. And we'll wait for the officials oh. to tell us. It was a hot potato. Eight men touched it. Wyoming area. Well, that's just a really bad mistake on the part of Berwick. There's no way he's going anywhere if he picks that ball up. Jesse Segelka coming up at the bottom of the pile. First, it should have been caught in the air. When you mention how high it is, Jim, someone's got to catch it. If you're not going to catch it, then get away from it. One man ran out of bounds, and the other man then tried to pick it up, maybe because he left the last one go that he got to field. Could have field it, and then it bounced. The Berwick player hit it, another hit it. It was a ping-pong ball out there going between people's legs. And Wyoming area comes up with the football. Nine seconds to go in the quarter. DeLuca back to throw. Looking, looking. Big pass rush. He's going to run away from it to the right. Fires downfield. Has a man. A completion right down near the goal line. It's going to be first and goal as Minichello makes a terrific catch with a defender wrapped around him. We are through one quarter of play here at Wyoming area. There is no score, but when we start this second quarter, the Warriors of Wyoming area will be very, very close to the first score of the game. They're marking that ball down around the one-yard line.
Berwick. State-of-the-art equipment comes together with a tradition of 45 years of personalized care. From the youngest to the oldest patient, let Berwick Dental Arts doctors and staff take care of every aspect of your dental needs. Assess all types of insurances. Make your appointment today. Call Berwick Dental Arts friendly staff at 752-4542. Berwick Dental Arts, making smiles beautiful. Berwick Bulldog Football. In the first quarter, Scranton Prep leads Lake Lehman 7-0. Coughlin leads Crestwood 7-0. And Dallas leads Pittson 14-0. I'm Ben Willis for Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg, and Greater Hazelton 103.5. Jim Doyle, Andy Lichty, our spotter Gary Kreischer from Jake Sobeski Stadium in West Pittston. One quarter in the books. Mistake-filled quarter for Berwick. And as a result, nothing on the board for the Bulldogs. Nothing on the board for Wyoming area just yet, but they have less than a yard to go. First and goal as they'll move from our left to our right in this second quarter. Credit quarterback Dominic DeLuca on the play. The young man showed a lot of poise. He was in the pocket. Will Decker barreling down for what looked like a sure sack. He ducked under it. Rolled to his right. Saw Minichello with coverage on him. But he knows the talents of Minichello. He squared his shoulders, rifled it to the man who had inside position, turned and right at the goal line, made the catch. Power eye to the right side. From inside the Berwick one-yard line, Rodney the call. Darren Rodney runs into a wall. No indication nope. from the officials. And it looks like Berwick has stopped the sophomore running back short of the goal line. Yeah. Linesman here on the near side would have to call it as it comes to the right. He saw sort of the hit and the bounce back and then the collapsing on the player. Not breaking the plan of the end zone, not getting the surge that he needs even when they're in power eye. Tegan Wilk among the players in on the play for Berwick. Second down and goal. Wilding area. Again, just short of the Berwick goal line. Warriors moving from our left to our right in this second quarter. Again, power eye to the right. Two blockers ahead of Rodney who gets the call again, tries the right side, lowers the head, he's hit hard, and the officials step in, and no yeah, indication no. of touchdown, another big play, Joey Lynn in on the play, so now it's third down and goal, just inches from the Berwick goal line. Tom Monaco also in there, Jim, they're stuffing things. They have big people, Chase Struthers in the gap, Mike Zalutko in the gap. Timeout, Warriors, 10.49 to go in a scoreless first half. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Classic Rock 103.5. Welsh's Towing and Repair proudly supports the Berwick Bulldogs and wishes them a successful year. Welsh's Towing and Repair has a long tradition of helping. You can call Welsh's 24-7 at 759-9737. If you are in need of a tow, jump start, tire change, are locked out, or to request them on scene if you're in an accident. Welsh's accepts all major insurance and motor clubs, and they offer all types of preventive maintenance and state inspections for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Welsh's Towing and Repair, South Mercer Street in Berwick and at their South Center Storage Facility, Columbia Boulevard in Berwick. When the music stops, that's football. This is Berwick football coach Frank Sheptock. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg, and Greater Hazelton 103.5. 10 minutes, 49 seconds remaining here in the first half at Jake Sobeski Stadium in West Pittston. Week three of the high school football season. No score between Berwick and Wyoming area. The Wyoming area started this quarter with the ball inside the Berwick one-yard line. And twice they've given it to their best running back, Darren Rodney, and he has met a stone wall. Warriors calling the timeout. Now they face third down and goal inside the Berwick one. Strategic timeout, where to go? You change your personnel. Cameron Carr has been at the point of attack. He's still there at right guard. Now the power is to the left. DeLuca gives off the right side and in for the touchdown is Justin Joseph. They go counter and the blocking to the left brought Joseph to the right. He's in for the score and the Warriors have the lead. Yeah, nice, nice look. Little misdirection. They still attack the right side but further out. They pulled big Damon Barnhart, the senior lineman. He got the kick out that they needed and it springs Joseph for the touchdown. So the muff punt by Berwick leads to a score for Wyoming area. Frank Brasina will attempt the extra point out of the hole of Dominic DeLuca. Flag down on the play. And what is it? Too many men Berwick. 
Yeah, they were just getting him. Yard and a half in. Or do you have the option of taking that on the kickoff? They're also kind of pushing Wyoming area back like a sideline warning. Yard and a half doesn't matter, but it's not the greatest kicking team. They well, that, I, we don't know that, Andy, no, because last game they, had, they missed one, and then they went for two the next two times. Yeah. So it's, they didn't miss three against uh, Crestwood. So Brasini will attempt it out of the hold of Dominic DeLuca. Snap is high, and it bounces away from DeLuca, and then he is buried back at the 20-yard line. So the bad snap leads to a missed extra point attempt. 10.46 to go in the first half. Wyoming area 6, Berwick nothing. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. Riverview Block of Berwick, with over 60 years of service, can handle all of your block and concrete needs. They carry all sizes of concrete and lightweight block. They have front and discharge trucks for ready mix concrete. Riverview Block also carries all masonry supplies, sand and gravel. For prompt delivery, call Riverview Block, 752-7191. Riverview Block is proud to support the Berwick Bulldogs. When the music stops, that's football. This is Berwick football coach Frank Sheptock. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg, and Greater Hazleton 103.5. Frank Brasini will kick off. Wyoming area with the lead 6-0. They take advantage of a Berwick muff punt and go 22 yards in four plays. Justin Joseph in from the one-yard line. Bad snap prevents the extra point. Bersini will kick it off. High and deep and up the middle. Return to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, and knocked back. At the 33-yard line is Evan Klinger getting down for Wyoming area. Charles... Manischewski. So Berwick from the 34-yard line will take over. Bulldogs been guilty of a lot of mistakes here in the opening half, and they trail 6-0. And mistakes that shouldn't happen, things that should be honed in practice and perfected. You know, players do try their best, but things like linemen downfield, uh, and snapping games got to be a little sharper. The focus on when that snap count is, to avoid distractions. Too many mistakes, you know, for an offense that should be overwhelming. Alex Force has the shotgun snap, gives the ball to Evan Klinger. He is hit behind the line, breaks free over the 40, over the 45, out to midfield, still on his feet to the Wyoming area, 48-yard line. Wyoming area defended that about as well as you can. Hit him behind the line, kept those legs driving. We'll have a injury timeout. There's a warrior down on the field back at the 31. Darren Rodney, quarterback, running back is the man injured. He's the man who had Evan Klinger in the backfield. It was a collision, a hard collision. Somehow Klinger maintained his balance and bounced away from it and it puts Darren Rodney down on the ground. Hate to see the injury, but tremendous running after that. Bounced to the outside. Wyoming area did not uh, continue well with its pursuit. Then had the wrong pursuit angles. Uh, ends up being a 15-yard gain or so. But right now the concern for Wyoming area is the health of Darren Rodney. Two-way player, uh, leading ball carrier, cornerback for them. Hopefully it's just something like the wind knocked out of them. We'll see. 6.35 to go in the first quarter in a game elsewhere. Coughlin and Crestwood locked in a 7-7 tie. Crestwood going into that game with a 2-0 record. The Comets of Crestwood will be at Crespin Field. Take on the Bulldogs next Friday night. Here, Berwick has moved the ball, and they've had great opportunities, but they have nothing on the board, and they trail 6-0 with 10.29 to go in the first half. That last run by Evan Klinger, 17 yards. He had one of 35 earlier. He is off to a really big night. 92 yards here in the first half, and they have uh, the running back, Darren Rodney, the Wild McGarrya running back corner up on his feet. Very gingerly putting weight on the right ankle, walking under his own power, just a little uh, off. Hard to say if they can tape him up and get him back. Depends on the severity of the injury. 
So Berwick in Wyoming area of territory for the third time in this game. They have it at the Warrior 49-yard line after the great effort by Evan Klinger. Yeah. Hit Mike, behind the line. Should have been a loss. He makes 17 yards out of it. My talk now is, guys, finish. Finish. No mistakes. We're making big plays. We can shred this team. We have the talent. We can't beat ourselves. That would have been my talk on the sidelines. Slot to the left. Force has the shotgun snap. He fires over the middle, has his man, Watts. And Jared Watts breaks out of a tackle. Still on his feet, gets to the 35 to the 34-yard line. 15 yards on the reception to Jared Watts. Ball thrown right in there by Alex Force. First to 10 Bulldogs at the 34. Short post at the middle at about 12 yards down. Field, he stops, spins, spins a ram, and loses three players. Unbelievable move instinctive, but uh, I've never seen one like that on the football field. First and ten for the Bulldogs at the 35. And flags and whistles. Thrown by the umpire behind the play. Again, are we seeing movement in the interior of the line? It's moving Berwick back at least five. The center has been jumpy with that ball. He slides it a little bit, sometimes thinking, uh, should I snap it now at the wrong call? Been tentative. I'm not sure if it was him or one of the guards, but Frank Galecki, the umpire, is watching the interior. He threw the flag. First and 15 Bulldogs at the Warrior 40. Beckhorn comes in that half-moon motion and a pitch to him, and he goes off the right side. Puts a move on or two and is forced out of bounds across the way inside the 35-yard line of Wyoming area. Interesting play. We've never seen that particular design. We've seen him half-moon motion from the far sideline to the quarterback. But then he pivots and changes direction, goes back the way he started and takes the pitch and gains uh, most of the penalty back before they push him out of bounds. They'll give him four yards. They mark it. Not the 36-yard line. Second down, 11 Bulldogs. Force gives the ball up to Owen Shoemaker, tries the right side. Shoemaker gets just a couple before he's hit hard. He'll get to the 33, give him three. Corey Maruk making this stop for Wyoming area. They'll take 3-4, three, 3-4, four, three, four, and they'll get the chains if they do. Berwick again in fourth down territory. A little far for a field goal from here, but you're not going to punt. Third down and eight. Berwick at the Wyoming area, 33-yard line. Force has the shotgun snap. Fires it out. Has his man, Tegan Wilk, inside the 30, down to the 27-yard line. Be a couple yards short, so Wilk plays some wide out. Makes the catch. They picked up seven. They needed eight. Fourth and one, Berwick at the Warrior 26. Changing personnel probably to a power look. That's what it is. Montez and Joey, uh, help me with the line. Lynn. Backer. Joey Lynn coming in to play those double tights. And Berwick will use the timeout. 8.36 to go in the first half. 6 nothing. Wyoming area over Berwick. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. When you need the services of a professional law firm, you need the law offices of Lutz and Petty at 916 West Front Street in Berwick. Lutz and Petty is your hometown choice for elder law and asset protection, criminal law, estate planning, real estate, and personal injury. The full-service legal team of Lutz and Petty takes this opportunity to wish the Berwick Bulldogs a successful and injury-free season. Call them at 570-218-4888. The law offices of Lutz and Petty, protecting you. Go dogs! When the music stops, that's football. This is Berwick football coach Frank Sheptock. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg, and Greater Hazelton 103.5. Big play coming for the Bulldogs of Berwick. They trail Wyoming area here at Jake Stavesky Stadium in West Pittston. 6 nothing. 8.36 remaining in the first half. And following this Bulldog timeout, Berwick will have a fourth down and one at the Warrior 26-yard line. By going back to the last passing play, Alex Forrest just looks so comfortable. Wonderful protection deep in the pocket. Slings it out, uh, poised to Tegan Wilk, who makes a short catch and brings them in for this very tight fourth and short. Lynn is the blocking back ahead of Shoemaker. Montez 
Shifts to a tight end position on the right. Fourth and one. Shoemaker the call. Shoemaker has the first down, then some inside the 20 and down to the 15-yard line. Owen Shoemaker with the burst. They needed one. He got 11. Bulldogs on the march. They get 10 as they mark it at the 16-yard line. little trapping play like the touchdown Wyoming area had. He brought Tom Monaco from left to right and turned him up the seam to lead. From the 16-yard line, Berwick quickly to the line of scrimmage. The call goes to Shoemaker again. The junior straight ahead is inside the 15 to the 14, maybe to the 13-yard line. Damon Barnheit makes the stop for the Warriors. Maximizes what he can on the run, Jim. They kept him north and south. They want to make him conscious of being a downhill runner. Use his size and power. He did there. Second and seven from the 13. Force. Gives the ball to Shoemaker again off the left side. Runs into a tackler and gets uh, maybe to the 11-yard line. Good defensive work by the Warriors. He'll pick up two on the play. Corey Maruk in on the stop. It's going to be third down and five. Berwick at the Wyoming area 11-yard line. Ball's on the left hash. Wide side of field to the right. Alex Force, a right-handed quarterback. But it's the... Wildcat, and Damon Beckhorn's going to take that direct snap. He takes it, but flags and whistles before the snap. Not a delay. Line's been through it. He shook his hands calling for the snap, but the referee or umpire would have called that. Linesman sees somebody offside, and Berwick again backing up another penalty. So it's going to be back in the 16-yard line. I also lose the element of surprise. Beckhorn's there. I'm unaware. You notice it because that's your job. Wyoming area may not catch on as quickly. Now they're aware. Coaches will yell out to them, watch for this play, watch for that play. Berwick will revert to a standard offense, I believe. Let's see. Third down and ten. Berwick. Alex Parks in it as a wide receiver. To the right. Alex Force is the quarterback. He has the snap. He rolls right. He looks to the end zone. The pass down that way. Incomplete. Just beyond the reach of Damon Beckhorn. So now it is fourth down and 10. Berwick at the 16. Certainly well within the range of Ken Marshman. And it looks like Marshman will come on to attempt the field goal. Yeah, two of two in field goals this year. There is a player down deep in the end zone away from us for Wyoming area. So Berwick will have that injury timeout to talk about it. Marshman, a real force for the Bulldogs from that place kicker position. Two for two in field goals. Last year he was nine for 10 as a long of 38 yards. But again, Bulldogs had a great opportunity they had a first and 10 at the 16-yard line. They got it as close as the 11-yard line, but then the penalty just sets them back. It does. They had themselves timed in well with the play selection to run the Wildcat, catch people off guard, and, you know, having the right play called. It may have gone. Maybe it's defended, but the penalty stops it. Dimitri DiPietro is the safety he wasn't really near the play, but the field has a rather severe crown. It could get worse as you get to the back of that end zone. Damon Beckward kind of thought eased up on that ball a little bit. He was running, thought he was covered, and uh, forced through it beyond the man anyway. Uh, he almost gets a hand on it, but a man following the play twists an ankle deep in that end zone. They're still tending to him. He's up now. Yep, should be okay. Meanwhile, Darren Rodney, who was injured earlier on this series down on the sideline, mm. and he has the, the shoe off. Ice they, on it. Yeah. And, and you know, you, you take a size school like Wyoming area, you lose one player, you lose two. Yeah. As he's a starter on both sides. But so far, the Warriors hang it in there. Helped, obviously, by the Berwick mistakes. And now Ken Marshman will come out and attempt the field goal out of the hold of Evan Klinger. Alex Force does the snapping. The hold will be at the 23. So this is a 33-yard field goal attempt 
Wildman by Gary. senior Ken Marshall. Wildman Gary had overloaded to try to block the punt, created the trouble with it. Here I think they're more worried about the fake. They're going to sit back and defend things just to be sure. Alex Forrest with a good snap. Placement by Klinger. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Time out of the field. 6.56 remaining in the first half of play. Wilding area. Six at Berwick. Three. You're listening to Bulldogs football and Classic Rock. Little 3.5. Choose with confidence. The Medicine Shop. At the Medicine Shop Pharmacy located at the corner of 9th and Pine Streets in Berwick, caring goes beyond the prescriptions. Discover the one-on-one customer service and dedication that makes caring part of the culture at the Medicine Shop in Berwick. Stock up on everything you need to keep you and your family healthy all year long. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy, located on the corner of 9th and Pine Streets in Berwick, where caring goes beyond the prescriptions. When the music stops, that's football. This is Berwick football coach Frank Sheptock. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg, and Greater Hazelton 103.5. Bulldogs of Berwick are on the board for the first time as they... Go on an 11 play drive, capped on a 33 yard field goal by junior place kicker Ken Marshman. 6 3, Wilding area leads at 6.56 remaining in this opening half. Marshman, who had three touchbacks in the game against Dallas last week at Crispin Field, gets his foot into this one to line drive kick, field at the six yard line, the return to the 10, the 15, the 20. Trattini down the sideline, the 40 flags down the play before he's ridden out of bounds. Some of this may came back, come back, but a fine run back by Robbie Trattini to the 48-yard line. Flags are at the 30-yard line, and I wondered if he was tight roping and stepped out of bounds, and rather than dropping a hat, they dropped flags. Uh, one may have thrown the flag in response to the other, or both saw a clip behind the play. Was there a signal? They are marching it back from the 30. It's a holding call against the Warriors, and we'll bring it back to the 20-yard line. So that negates uh, 28 yards more return by Trattini. And Wyoming area has the football. This is their first series without their leading rusher, Darren Rodney. They move from our left to our right this quarter. And DeLuca will operate out of the gun with Joseph, who had the touchdown earlier. The protector to his left. Minichello comes in motion, a fake to him, back to throw is DeLuca, rolls right, fires a pass incomplete. Good pass rush that time by the Bulldogs, forcing DeLuca out of the pocket and then just having to throw it away. So it's second down and 10, Warriors at their 20. Defensive ends have been coming hard at him, but he's managed to duck under or roll around. Then the momentum takes the defensive end out of the play, and he buys time. But no one opening up smartly grounds the ball toward the sideline where he had a receiver. Jimmy Legrand had the pressure on the quarterback to Luca that time. High formation. Ball goes to Barak looking for room and makes a nice spin move. and gets out near the 28-yard line before Ryan Lawbaugh. Does a great job coming off the bench and playing that corner spot for the Bulldogs. The sophomore makes the play. So it's third down and two for the Warriors. Trapping play. This team likes to trap. The misdirection was good. Evan Klinger came up, and then that spin ensued after that to give him four or five more yards. Here's Maroc on third and two, looking for the first down yardage, and Corey Maroc has it. Klinger makes the tackle, but not before Maroc gets over the 35-yard line for a Warrior first down. I like the way that Maruk plays. Linebacker, fullback is a great combination for a tough-nosed kid. Uh, not very big. He only goes at, uh, check the size, uh, 5'8", 180. But a sophomore who will grow into the position even more. Stepped off a few more yards there. Inadvertent face mask call. So give him seven to the 35-yard line. And then tack on to the 40 with the penalty. And it's first and 10 for the Warriors. 6.03 to go this opening half. They lead Berwick 6-3. Donovan O'Boyle is at the tailback position, but the call goes straight ahead to Joseph, the fullback. 
and he gets just two to the 42-yard line. Joshua Snyder, the nose guard, did a great job. Shot through the A-gap here on the left side. Met the man in the backfield, wrapped him up. Momentum takes him for a little less than a yard. Real nice play out of the nose guard, Joshua Snyder. Justin Joseph shaking up on the play. Who's left? Boy, Wyoming area having some problems with injuries in this opening half, and yet they lead. Second down and eight, toss sweep left side to O'Boyle. Donovan O'Boyle has running room to the outside, dives to the sticks, he's close, out near midfield. Had no stats coming in, but we saw him on the depth chart. He'll get seven or eight yards just on a pitch sweep. Berwick normally can play, good pursuing defense, come up hard and make the plays. But Wyoming area, despite suffering injuries, keeps coming and coming. Six yards in the carry by Donovan O'Boyle, a 5'8", 175-pound senior. And the Warriors face third down and two. They have it at their own 48-yard line. Slot to the right side. Eye formation. Toss sweep left side to O'Boyle. Great defense by the Bulldogs. He'll lose yardage back to the 45-yard line. When you yell great defense, the name you usually think first is Evan Klinger. Blitzing from the secondary, sort of a strong safety linebacker position. Met that play in the backfield. There was also pursuit coming up, but he was the first man there to spin him down. So Berwick comes up with a big defensive play, and Wyoming area will have to punt it away as they face a fourth down and five at their own 45-yard line. Punter is the quarterback. Four minutes to go. Midfield, 45-yard line. Not the worst place to try a fake. You do have the lead, though. But nice to go in at halftime and make sure that you have that lead. They're counting players. While McGarry is not sure they have everybody they need. They get an 11th player on. DeLuca will stand back at his 28-yard line. Klinger and Beckhorn. Deep anticipating the punt for the Bulldogs. Steven Sokash Minich with the snap. The kick is away. Line drive kick off the side of his foot goes out of bounds. And they'll walk it up the sideline. This is not going to be a very good punt. And Berwick's going to take over in good field position with 3.47 to go in the half. The Bulldogs trailing 6-3. They have one timeout remaining and they have it at their own 47 yard line. Hurts if they've used two timeouts earlier but sometimes you have to like to see what they can do in a hurry up. They're always in a bit of a hurry up, but they'll speed it up more like a two minute drill if they can. Just eight yards in that punt by Dominic DeLuca and Berwick from their own 47 yard line. A sophomore Noah Craig over the football. Slot to the left side, David Beckhorn's in the slot. The call goes to Evan Klinger. Klinger has some running room as he gets to midfield and gets to the Wyoming area, 49-yard line. Shane Eastlick bringing him down at that point, one-on-one. That's a tough tackle to make. But he was there to keep it to just a short two yards. They mark it at the 49 of Berwick, so it's second down and eight. Clock running, 3.20 to go in this half. Slot to the left. Wyoming area moved, and they're pointing toward the Berwick offensive line. Yeah. We'll see what the officials think. I think Tom Monaco stood up. Defense is allowed to move. They don't have to hold a position. Offense can't. Tom Monaco came up, and there's another five-yarder. So it's going to be a second down and 14 for Berwick back at their own 44-yard line. Alex Force has the shotgun snap, and he's back to throw, and he fires over the middle. A diving catch by yep. Watts. It's a completion at the 46-yard line of the Warriors. What a terrific catch by Jared Watts. Went low while McGarry is trying to say it bounced. It looked close, but the officials recognizing the catch was true. Third down and four, 10 yards on the reception. The ball's at the Wyoming area 46-yard line. Force gets a high snap, but gets the ball off to Evan Klinger. Klinger straight ahead, gets very, very close to the first down yardage. He's inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. 
Berwick wouldn't mind the stoppage of the clock for a measurement. It looks that close. It's going to be hard to eyeball. They will stop for the measurement. Gives Berwick time to think. If you don't have this, you go for it on fourth down, I think, with 228 in this field position. Evan Klinger has looked good in the first two games this season. He looks even better from that running back position tonight. 97 yards approaching halftime. Might just give it to him here if they're short, and he'll have the 100-yard game before the first two quarters end. They're stretching the chain now on a critical measurement. Ooh, they still can't see it. I still can't see it. They're stretched. They're looking inches, just an inch short. One of the problems when you're uh, typically taking all your snaps from shotgun is you're not used to going under center and sneaking it. However, you have big backs. Frank Sheptock likes to go with that sort of double tight end, each back look, and use that type of power. You have a great size differential from the opposition at your offensive line. See how they choose to play this. I'd expect a running back. Big call, fourth and inches, Bulldogs at the Warrior 43-yard line. 2.28 to go in the half. Berwick trailing 6-3. to three. As Force lines up in the gun, Klinger's more in a position of a blocking back. Now Force comes under center, takes the snap. The line gives a surge, and Alex Force does use that quarterback keeper to get a Berwick first down. Yeah, they told him go to Tom Monaco. They went with double wings. That spreads the defense out as much as you can. You just can't stay tight because there's too many gaps to fill. He did go under, took the snap cleanly, bent to his left, went with the experienced lineman, Tom Monaco, the senior at 284 pounds. First and 10, Berwick at the Wyoming area 41-yard line. Slot to the right, Tegan Wilk is wide to the left. Force. Play action, back to throw, looking for Wilk, one-on-one down this near sideline. Diving attempt by him down to 10, just can't come up with it. Good battle, Tegan Wilk and Robbie Trattini. Ball just a bit overthrown. Stops the clock with 2.03 to go in the half. And Burling second and 10 at the Warrior 41. No flags. I would have thrown one on Berwick. I thought about four players were moving before the ball started back to the center. The officials letting it go, letting the play continue. Second down and 10. Wilk to the left. Slot to the right. Forces rolling right. Looking, looking. Steps up into it. See some running room to the 35, to the 30, down to the 29-yard line. Alex Force, who ran very effectively against Dallas last week, has his first good run of this night, and Berwick comes up for the big first down with 155 to go in the half. They mark it at the 29. That's a 12-yard pickup. Corey Maruk wrapped him up, and then another man kind of slid into him. I wonder if they were going to throw a flag there, but they're letting them play. From the 29-yard line, first and 10, Berwick. Joe Norse on a wing to the right side. High snap. The ball is loose. The scramble is on inside the 20-yard line. Evan Klinger dove and dove again, sprang out from all fours and look to come up with that football. Players hurt on the play. It's Alex Force. Oh boy, holding his right elbow in. And now, now you don't know. Knock the wind, we'll have to see after they deal with him. He's standing, bent over, trainers talking to him. I thought at first he was grabbing the throwing arm, but I think it's more of a got shook up. He'll have to come out for, well, they. Is it a stoppage for the injury, or is Berwick taking their timeout? If Berwick takes the timeout, which seems to be the indication because it's a prolonged stoppage, then Force can re-enter the game. But, again, another mistake. Another high snap. This one can't be fielded. Force has to go so high that he can barely tip it. When he gets it, it tips forward toward the line of scrimmage. Klinger springing on the ball that really looked like it was going to be recovered by Wyoming area. Berwick with one minute and 29 seconds left in this half will get another chance. Bulldogs out of timeouts. 3.48 left in the first half in the Crestwood-Coughlin game. Crestwood leading that one 
14 to 7. Again, the Comets will be coming to Crispin Field next Friday night. Here it's a 6-3 Wyoming area lead over Berwick. 129 to go in the half. Of course, the Bulldogs would love to take the lead before the half, but they are getting very close to Ken Marshman field goal territory as well. No timeouts remaining. Alex Forrest is in the game. They're holding things up to make sure both teams are ready to play. Slot to the left side. Tegan Wilk to the far left. And Jared Watts in the slot. Starting cornerback on the right side is injured. Darren Rodney, they attack that area. Force going to the right, has David Beckhorn for just a couple. Inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. See where they mark it. The clock might have gotten out of bounds, Jim. He must have blocked the clock. So the pass complete, but for little or no gain. In fact, no gain. Third and eight at the Wyoming area, 28. Force out of the gun. Has the snap. Back to throw. Looking long for Damon Beckhorn. He's with Trattini, and the pass is incomplete. So it's got to be a fourth and eight for Berwick at the 28. Now strong the legs Marshman got, Jim. Well, this would be a career long if they attempted from here. Well, you only make them if you attempt them. <laughs> 124. Tough to convert on fourth and a long gate. They'll give that a shot. They don't have a timeout to think about it. Klinger is the running back. Three receivers to the left. And oh. a snap comes at Force while he's looking to the sideline. Goes off his chest. And Wyoming area will take over the football. I think Berwick was trying to call the timeout they didn't have, Jim. Force did not look. No one moved but the snapper who hits Force in the belts. Now a penalty flag, so something had to have been said, or it is a penalty to attempt to call a timeout that you don't have, and that would be a very late call. We'll see how the officials go with this. In any case, fourth down opportunity missed, and again, you don't even get the play off to get an attempt at it. Now, Forrest was looking to the sideline. I think they might have rethought what they wanted to do, change the play, or think of the field goal opportunity. They're moving the chains now to show it will be Wyoming area's football. The flag is still on the ground. They dropped it there specifically to show there's a penalty to be marched off. Well, what a half of missed opportunities oh. for Berwick. They have spent almost this entire first half in Wyoming area territory, and they have three points to show for it, and they trail 6-3 with 121 remaining before the break. When they get plays off, the plays go well, but then mistakes, miscues of every variety. They're going to see a 15-yard walk-off. Unsportsmanlike against Berwick. He'll take it out to the 46-yard line. Now, Wyoming area, good field position. They have two timeouts left. We'll see how they play it with 121 to go in the half, and they have that 6-3 lead. Play without starting running back, Darren Rodney. Might let them be a little more conservative. We'll see. Two completed passes to Minichello. He's their star. Maruk gets the call. Corey Maruk gets to midfield. Picks up four with a straight-ahead run. Second down and six for the Warriors. They let that clock run. Now, we know Rodney's out of there, and Justin Joseph would normally be in here at this moment. He had the touchdown run earlier. He has not returned since coming off the field, although he still has his helmet on down below us to our left. I think they like Maruk as a runner. Singleton, no, they have a fullback in front of him. Second down and six from midfield. DeLuca gives to Corey Maruk. Looks for room, not much there. Good second effort, though. Slips to the Berwick 47-yard line. Picks up three, but it looked like there was nothing there. Third down call coming. Clock winding down. And, and I think, I think Randy go. Spencer will be uh, happy with that 6-3 lead, considering the entries he's had to his Warrior Run, to his Wyoming area team. And considering the, all the chances that Berwick has left on the table from the Berwick 47-yard line. 
perhaps the last play of this opening half. Maruk the call off the left side, Jimmy LeGrand, great penetration across the line of scrimmage, makes the tackle on what will be the final play of this opening half. With the score, Wyoming area six, and Berwick three, you're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock, little 3.5. Every step of the way, First Columbia Bank. Any questions, ask them. Let's dream and make it happen. Time to feel the way a friend can make your day. For the big decisions, every step of the way. Your hometown bank, the first place to go. With your big time plans together will grow. Every step of the way, First Columbia Bank. Home away from home boarding kettles in Berwick is a dream getaway for your dog when you are away. Home away from home boarding kennels offers on-site grooming, 19 air-conditioned kennels, and a fenced-in area for your dog to play. At home away from home boarding kennels, there are no restrictions on size or weight of your dog. The only thing they ask is that all dogs have proof of updated vaccines, including kennel cough. Call 570-759-8181 to schedule your dog's dream vacation today. Home away from home boarding kennels is a proud supporter of the Berwick Bulldogs. Safe Light Repair, Safe Light Replace. Ryan, technician with Safe Light Auto Glass. So you think all auto glass companies are the same? Well, they're not. With Safe Light, you get more. Every windshield we replace is backed by a national lifetime guarantee, keeping you covered wherever you are. Plus, Safe Light has more glass in stock than anyone, so we can get to you faster. Just tell your insurance company you want Safe Light, or call us at 1 800 800 2727, or go to safelight.com. It won't be long before tax time rolls around, so remember to visit Michael Daddio CPA at ND Accounting and Consulting for your income tax needs. ND Accounting and Consulting handles both business and individual taxes, as well as offering a variety of accounting services, including payroll auditing and bookkeeping for tax and accounting services look for michael daddio cpa at nd accounting and consulting with two locations 214 pine street in berwick and 5929 main road in sweet valley when the music stops that's football this is berwick football coach frank Sheptock. you're listening to bulldogs football on classic rock 103.5 berwick bloomsburg and greater hazelton 103.5 Jim Doyle, Andy Lickney, our spotter Gary Kreischer from Jake Sobeski Stadium in West Pittston. We're at halftime with Wilding Area leading Berwick by a score of 6-3. A gritty performance by the Warriors of Wilding Area, losing several key players in that opening half to injury. And for Berwick, a mistake-filled first half where the Bulldogs had all sorts of opportunities, five possessions, five times they're in Wilding Area territory, and they only have three points on the board, trailing 6-3 here at the break. Berwick's first possession of the game off the opening kickoff. They got it all the way to the Wyoming area 32-yard line where they faced a second down and one. But a snap that quarterback Alex Force was not ready for sailed by him. He had to recover. It was a 13-yard loss, and Berwick never recovered from that. Late that first quarter, Berwick forced a punt from Wyoming area, but they muffed the punt. And the Warriors took over at the Bulldog 22-yard line. Early in the second quarter, on the fourth play, what will be a 22-yard drive, Justin Joseph lined up as if to be a block back to the left, took the handoff, went to the right, got in for the touchdown to give Wyoming area the lead. The big play on that drive happened late in the opening quarter. Berwick almost had a sack of quarterback Dominic DeLuca, who made a great play to get away from a would-be tackler roll right and then threw a strike to mark anthony minichello at the one yard line setting up that eventual touchdown run by justin joseph there was a bad snap on the extra point attempt wyoming area led six nothing 10 46 to go in the opening half berwick finally got on the board in that second quarter they put together an 11 play drive it started at their 34 yard line on third and five at the 11 they had a five yard penalty penalties again a big factor for berwick in this half it really set them back and they had to settle for a 33 yard field goal by ken marshman and it was 6-3 while in the area was 656 remaining in the half big plays along that 11 play drive two passes from alex force excuse me 
one pass to Jared Watts of 14 yards and a 17-yard run by Evan Klinger, who had a big first half running the football. So 6-3 was the Wyoming area lead. And then Berwick had a fourth down and eight in Wyoming area territory late in the half. And the snap got away from Alex Force. It looked like he was looking to the sideline when the snap came, hit him in the chest. Wyoming area took over the football, ran out the clock, and that's how we stand here at the break. Wyoming area six, Berwick three. We'll check uh, some scores with Ben Willis, some stats with Andy Alickney. When we return, you're listening to Berwick Football and Classic Rock 103.5. Being in business for over 100 years really means something. It means you've been putting out an excellent product and taking care of your customers so they want to come back. Delos Bakery Berwick falls into that special group of businesses. Oven fresh pizza, bread and rolls. Order extra pizza for a fast dinner when the party arrives. Open 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week. Visit Delos Bakery at 1201 Freeze Avenue, Berwick or call 752-4519. Safe light repair, safe light replace. Ryan, technician with Safe Light Auto Glass. So you think all auto glass companies are the same? Well, they're not. With Safe Light, you get more. Every windshield we replace is backed by a national lifetime guarantee, keeping you covered wherever you are. Plus, Safe Light has more glass in stock than anyone, so we can get to you faster. Just tell your insurance company you want Safe Light, or call us at 1 800 800 2727, or go to safelight.com. Yannick Real Estate is your full service real estate agency. Buying, selling, residential, commercial, multifamily, land, and rental management. Call Yannick Real Estate. Owner Mike Yannick, a veteran himself, served his country and has been serving this area for decades. Mike and his staff will guide you through the real estate process. Veterans, be sure to check the VA loan options. Yannick Real Estate, your full-service real estate agency. 1232 West Front Street in Berwick. Call 759-3300. Berwick Bulldog Football. Taking a look at the high school football scoreboard this evening at halftime. Scranton Prep leads Lake Leland 23-0. Crestwood leads Coughlin 14-7. Sealing Grove leads Shemokin 7-0. Dallas leads Pittston 24-7. Delaware Valley leads Wyoming Valley West 14-9. Southern Columbia leads Mount Carmel 12-0. Central Columbia leads Tawanda 14-0. Danville leads Montoursville 7-0. And Bloomsburg leads Warrior Run 35-6 at half. And in the second, Hazleton leads Williamsport 19-7. I'm Ben Willis for Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg, and Greater Hazleton 103.5. Berwick High School Marching Band entertaining here at halftime from Jake Sebesky Stadium in West Pittston. The Warriors of Wyoming area leading Berwick by a score of 6-3. to three. That'll be a frustrating first half for Berwick coach Frank Sheptock. His Bulldogs had a lot of yardage, as Andy will detail in his stats. They had great field position. They were in Wyoming area territory five times, but mistakes, particularly the penalties really hurting the Bulldogs who trail here at the break by a score of 6-3. Stats from that first half, Andy Lickney. Well, the stat I'd like to see, Jim, and you might approach our friend uh, Alex Roberts there and see what the penalty yardage is for Berwick. I'm counting 5-10, 15, 20, 25, and another 15. Uh, yeah, I don't have time to get it all accurately keeping up with everything else but uh, it's been the story of the half that and some untimely snaps uh, some bad plays you know, Berwick is, is clobbering the Wyoming area on the stat sheet in, in, in offense versus defense but the game is more than that looking at Wyoming area Berwick's playing amazing defense they've limited Wyoming area to a very balanced attack they have 18 yards rushing and 18 yards passing, 36 yards at half, and yet they're leading on the scoreboard 6-3. to three. In the running department, 19 official rushing attempts for just 18 yards, 34 positive yards, minus 16. Darren Rodney, who was injured about eight minutes uh, to go in the half, had five carries for nine yards. Corey Maruk seems to have taken over a tailback for him. A fellow sophomore who had been in the backfield 
more as a blocking back for Rodney, now in sort of the running back position. He has six carries for 19 yards. And Donovan O'Boyle ran a sweep, got four. Justin Joseph was in, filling in for Darren Rodney. He turned an ankle or something. He's out. Two carries for two yards for him, including the one-yard touchdown plunge on a counter trap. Mark Minichello, their do-everything guy, not just a receiver. They ran him out of the backfield, but Berwick's very aware of his presence, as if he's flashing red when he has the ball. Two carries for minus eight yards. And Dominic DeLuca suffering a sack and a, a minimal game. He's two for minus eight. So a minus 16 and a plus 34, a net of just 18 yards rushing on 19 official rushing attempts. The air not much better, completed two of three for the same amount, 18 yards. Uh, the two were completed to Mark Anthony Minichello. The first loss, three yards, as Alex Parks really smelled it out. The other was a 21-yard gain to that very special talent. So a net of 18 yards receiving for him, which is all the receiving yards for the team. Added to the 18 rushing, and it's sort of a measly 36 yards in total offense. But Wyoming area has the lead 6-3. Berwick offensively didn't play that badly, but shooting themselves in the foot continually. Five-yard penalties here, 15-yard penalties there. Snaps before they're expected, uh, just, just misplays. Looking at the running game, 128 yards on 21 carries. Evan Klinger has been as dangerous as ever. Just short of 100 yards here at halftime. He has eight carries for 97 yards, and he's playing tremendously defensively. Owen Shoemaker has five carries. He has 18 yards. They wanted to use Damon Beckhorn more, but they were flat for penalties before some plays got off with him and the Wildcat. He's had two plays, two carries for 13. The team on a troublesome punt where he couldn't get it off because of the rush and the high snap. Loses 13 yards. Uh, Alex Sharkowski ran another one for positive yardage. Got two yards on that. And Alex Force, four carries for 11 yards. A net of 128 on the ground is, is wonderful. But they have to finish the drives, get the points, and get the touchdowns and put it in the end zone, and Berwick is not doing that. In the air, Berwick's 4 of 10, no interceptions. In fact, emphasize that none all year for Alex Force yet. Just 32 yards in the uh, passing game. Uh, Deegan Wilk getting some chance at wide receiver. They threw his way. Got a beautiful 18-yarder that was neutralized by a penalty. They'll give him credit for one seven-yard catch. Damon Beckhorn had one catch and had to be forced out of bounds on that for no gain. Other than that, it's been the Jared Watts show. Beautiful catches of 15 yards and 10 yards. 15 yards is short posting over the middle and then an amazing spin move to lose three potential tacklers. The 10-yarder picking off the ground and making an official catch off of that. So Berwick in all, four catches for 32 positive yards in the air. 128 on the ground, a total of 160 yards for their offense. Compare it to the mere 36 for Wyoming area, who sort of banged up and playing people that uh, they weren't expecting to even make their depth chart. But right now, despite all those advantages, mistakes have kept it to a 6-3 football game nine penalties against Berwick in that opening half for 65 yards and they had 12 the entire game against Dallas and they weren't happy with that nor should they uh, it's just uh, very very frustrating to have that huge advantage in yards and be down in the scoreboard 6-3 you know and it's not even like just take the 65 yards off because there's been penalties that have been called when snaps go back and the quarterback's not ready for it and the ball ends up being a fumble recovery for Wyoming area. Yeah, you decline that penalty. It's like that one doesn't count. And there's been a number of those throughout the game. So if you're mentioning nine penalties for 65 yards 
Hey, you probably could add in three or four more that were declined because of the advantageous situation in presented Wyoming area. And the big plays that were, uh, you know, neutralized and taken away. The beautiful 18-yard pass to Tegan Will down to our right. And some other plays along the way that are very successful or that make a first down. And now instead of having the first and 10, you're back with the first and 15. Very frustrating, and I'm sure Coach Sheptock and his coaches are talking about it. But, you know, it's it's often a tension problem. Uh, it, it's hard. You make these mistakes when you're over-pumped. You're a little too hyper and things happen. So it's a tough coaching decision on how to handle it. Just say, put that half out of your mind. We're better than this. Let's start clean. You know, I've already taken games where we've had a shellac and you throw that film away. You forget about it. Now, maybe that's what they need to do with this first half because they have all the advantages in moving the ball offense versus defense. They have a great advantage in, in the, the place kicking game. Uh, they just need to clean their heads, avoid the mistakes. And, you know, play Berwick football, and they should be able to take it in the second half. Well, the Bulldogs have a lot of weapons, and there's a lot of ways they can go. But uh, I'll be surprised if we don't see a heavy dose of Evan Klinger running the football because he looks electric tonight. He does, and I thought the offensive line, and it's straight on blocking, has looked better as well. Early in the game, inside the guards, they were bursting. Then they were doing some things with pulling tackles and pulling guards that looked good. Run him straight ahead, and uh, you know, he, he's a bullet coming out of that backfield, and then some moves downfield. I mean, a guy who pushes for 100 yards in the first half, he has eight carries for 97. Yeah, ride that horse, and it's one of the safest ways to make things happen. Sometimes when you go to too cutesy and you go to passing plays, you, you get the penalties, you get the hold, you get the things you don't want, a lineman downfield. Oh, uh, you know, the safest and simplest is go right at them, and, and they're a little beat up. A number of starters not in there. They'd want to have it. Well, we've been emphasizing Berwick mistakes because that is the story of the first half, and let's give credit to Randy Spencer and his team from Wyoming area. They were gritty. They hung in there. They made some big plays. Uh, they're without their leading rusher. Darren Rodney was injured that first half. Justin Joseph, a key player for them, was injured, did not come back out, but he's there now. He's got the helmet on, so we may see him in the second half. They hung in there, and I like the poise of their sophomore quarterback. Obviously, with the little yards they have in the first half, he doesn't have big numbers, but he made the play of the first half offensively in this game when he got away from a a would-be tackler rolled right and threw that strike to Mark Anthony Minichello that set him up at the one-yard line and led to the touchdown. He's, he's a cool customer. He's shown the escapability. Berwick has had pressure. They have one sack, but on two occasions, that occasion you just mentioned, and another here up to our left from our perspective, ducking under the defensive end, and then that end going so hard his pursuit takes him away finding a receiver after that or grounding it rather than taking the big loss. I've been uh, surprised, you know, for a guy that young who wasn't expected to start. You know, this team's star was B.J. Angeli, a name known throughout the region. Hurt early in the first game, throw the sophomore in. You know, <laughs> that's tough. But uh, he's shown he has the ability. He shows himself as poised. He handles the team well. It's a well-coached team, fundamentally. Not overly big in size, but they do things well. They execute. We're ready to start the second half. Wyoming area will get the football. Ken Marshman teeing it up for the Bulldogs. The Warriors will be moving from our left to our right. Burley coming in, 2-0 and on the season. Wyoming area 1-1. One one. The Warriors with that 6-3 lead. Brian Williams, Mark Anthony Minichello, Robbie Trattini, deep for Wyoming area. 6-3. Warriors lead the Bulldogs. Set for the second half kickoff. Like to see him put it in the end zone for the touchback. The last one was returned, but then a hold called it back. Ken Marshman gets his foot into it. It'll be Minichello up the middle at the 10-yard line. Minichello to the right. The 15. Good coverage by Berwick hemmed in by Tegan Wilk yeah. and forced out of bounds around the 25-yard line. Yeah, Tegan Wilk coming down has the contain. He 
gave the look to the outside, made the runner look like he was going to run in. Then he was paired. Then the runner bounces out with nowhere to go. It was wonderfully done. They mark it at the 22-yard line. So great coverage. Minichello got that kick at the 10-yard line. Just a 12-yard return. And the Warriors at their 22 with a first and 10. We're just underway in the second half. Wyoming area 6 and Berwick 3. Dominic DeLuca, the sophomore quarterback, at the controls. He is in the shotgun. Minichello is to his right. And the call goes to Mark Anthony Minichello off the left side, and he picks up about three to the 25-yard line. Second Joe, down and seven. Joe Norris among the players meeting in the backfield, but Minichello dragging them. Two guys meet in the backfield. Berwick Cackler's got to put him down, not give up three yards. And Darren Rodney is in that backfield for Wyoming area. We did not expect to see him anymore nope. tonight after that injury, but he's going to try to tough it out. And he is the lone running back behind DeLuca, who now is under center. He's looking for his fullback, Jim. They and don't have him. It'll be a timeout. Wyoming area will use the timeout. 11-16 to go. Third quarter. Wyoming Area 6, Berwick 3. You're listening to Bulldogs Football and Classic Rock 103.5. Harry Sporting Goods, a staple in downtown Berwick, in business for over 125 years. Harry Sporting Goods carries a wide variety of sneakers and cleats, now featuring Brooks Running Shoes. Harry specializes in sneakers and seasonal sporting goods, but also carries work boots and name brands, including Nike and Under Armour. Harry Sporting Goods, keeping the tradition alive while keeping up in the new era. Visit them on Facebook or on West Front Street in Berwick. Harry Sporting Goods. Hashtag, you need new sneakers. Proud to support area sports teams. When the music stops, that's football. This is Berwick football coach Frank Sheptock. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg, and Greater Hazelton 103.5. Early third quarter action from Jake Sebesky Stadium in West Pittston. Berwick trailing Wyoming area 6-3. Warriors following their timeout, second and six at their own 26-yard line. As they move from our left to our right here in the second half. Dominic DeLuca from the shotgun. Sends Minichello in motion. Fake to him. DeLuca keeps it to the right side. Berwick defends it pretty well, but DeLuca extends the body out to the 30. Picks up four on the play before Ryan Lawball can make the stop for the Bulldogs. So here's a third down and two. Our first third down situation coming in the second half. Ryan Lawball from the left corner back had to come up to the line of scrimmage. He was the man responsible for contain and did turn it in and then make a part of the tackle with a blocker on him. Fine play. Justin Joseph was in there in that last play. Now he comes out for Wyoming area, so they're walking wounded back in the lineup. In fact, Darren Rodney is the tailback in the eye for this third down and two. Morocco ahead of him is the fullback. DeLuca back to throw. Fires a quick out. Has Brian Williams. Williams has the first down. Spins for yardage out near the 44-yard line. Quick hitter. DeLuca to Williams. And the Warriors move the sticks. Yeah, very quick hitter. Getting it into shotgun immediately. The arm is up. Quickly delivered. Brian Williams on the right side, tight in the slot with the team on the near side, able to catch that quick slam. 14 yards on the reception, first and 10, Wyoming area at their 40, slot to the left eye formation, Rodney the call, up the gut, he has some running room, gets over midfield to the Berwick 49 yard line, Evan Klinger makes the stop for the Bulldogs. Trapping play, the seam was there, it had to be stopped at the second level, but the linebacker went too far. Ran past the hole, and then the secondary has to collapse. By the time they come up to a play in the middle, it's a seven-yard game. Second and three, Warriors on the march at the Berwick 49-yard line. Early third quarter, they lead the Bulldogs 6-3. Call goes the fullback, Maruk, and nothing doing. Linebackers there that time, right in the hole, stepping in. Noah Craig seeing the play, crashing and attacking it as soon as the give is there. He knows they're running his A-gap, his area of responsibility, and that's a big hit as the defensive lineman also collapse and help him. Now the third down situation, Warriors need three. They have it at the Bulldog 49-yard line. Wide side of the field to the left, but I think they're an inside team. 
three receivers to the left. DeLuca out of the gun. He's got to keep the ball off the right side, looking for the first down yardage. He won't get there. Good defensive work by the Bulldogs. Joey Lynn yeah. from his linebacker spot stood up the quarterback. And now it is going to be fourth down. They mark it right about the line of scrimmage. No gain. Fourth and three from the Berwick 49. Punt team will come on for Wyoming area. Yeah, they're changing the personnel. Now they could fake it. They're across the 50, but it's uh, you know, protecting the lead. You want to get rid of this. Joe Lind was not fooled. Formation looked like the play was going to the left. He wasn't convinced. He played his area of responsibility. Saw the quarterback coming his way. Shadowed him on that quarterback sweeping action and laid into him. Dominic DeLuca back at the Warrior 39-yard line. A short snap to Rodney, and he will oh. not get the first down. They did fake it. The short snap to Darren Rodney, and Berwick comes up with a defensive stand, and they'll take over the football near midfield. A.J. Snyder among the people in on the play for the Bulldogs. Yeah, but someone came up like a bullet, whether it's a linebacker. I think it might have been Tegan Wilk from safety. They read it. Berwick not fooled. I did not think they would go from the fake there. Snap to the up back about four yards behind right guard. He takes it up the middle on the short yardage play where they needed three. And Berwick had people converging. They read it. They saw it on the short snap. And I believe it was Tegan Wilk who put on a punishing hit to bend him back and prevent him from getting to the chains. They needed three. They got two. Berwick's first possession of this third quarter. Bulldogs trailing 6-3. 8-14 to go in the period. Force. Out of the gun, gives the ball to Evan Klinger. Klinger off the right side is over midfield to the Wyoming area, 49-yard line. Your philosophy in this half is to run simply with Evan Klinger. That run will give him 100 yards now on the game, a three-yard burst. He's looked extremely effective. The line has blocked well. It's been mistakes that has hurt. They want to continue this. Second and seven now, Beckhorn. Will take the direct snap out of the Wildcat. Klinger to the left. Klinger comes in motion. Beckhorn and flags and whistles. The H back on the right side. Took an early start. Had a full step or two with Beckhorn in motion. Not Canadian football. Five-yard penalty. We continue the disastrous run of penalties as a Berwick coach side of me in the other box throws his headset. It will be now 10 penalties for 70 yards against Berwick as they have a second down and 12, and they have it at their own 45-yard line. Alex Force awaiting the shotgun snap. Has it? Play action. Back to throw. Fires on the middle. Incomplete. Well behind the intended receiver, Tegan Wilk, at the Wyoming area 46-yard line. Tried to loft that over the arms of the upcoming rush. He had nice protection, had time. Tried to complete it with touch, but underthrown. Third and 13 because of the penalty. Bulldogs from their 45-yard line with 7.31 remaining in this third quarter. Wilk is wide to the left side. In motion, Joe Norse. He'll be a wing to the left. Now in motion, Beckhorn. The call goes to Klinger straight ahead, and Klinger very close to the first down yardage inside the 45 to the 43-yard line of Wyoming area. So they had a lot of things going on. Got the intention of the defense looking everywhere but for Evan Klinger. But that's uh, sort of their standard running play. They do it. There's attention to Beckhorn on what looks like a half-moon type of sweep. Attention to the quarterback. They're inches short, and they're showing punt, Jim. I'm surprised. Fourth down from the Wyoming area, 43-yard line. So, gosh. And now we're going to have a timeout called by Berwick. So we'll keep it here with 7-12 remaining. They might want to rethink this. I would rethink, you know, sometime in the, you know, the heat of things, you lose track of where exactly are we, how short, we're inches, and we are across the 50, we're at the 44-yard line, and Berwick's much bigger than this team, when they've gone with straight power, they've made things happen, the worst comes to worst, and they get a penalty, then they punt it anyway. No, I, I do think it was one of those, you know, quicker decisions, not quite realizing 
the down and distance the chains presented. So the Bulldogs will talk this one over. Their first possession of the second half. Wyoming area on their first possession. Fake the punt. The short snap went to Darren Rodney, and the Bulldogs came up with a big defensive play. Fourth and short earlier in the game, we saw Alex Forrest get under the center rather than shotgun and sneak it left behind Tom Monaco. They now they are a- lining up as if to go for it. No punt here from the 43-yard line. Under center, they throw a pass, and it's short to the far side. Incomplete. And Wyoming area will take over the football. Oh. And a quick out to Damon Beckhorn, who is wide open. And the pass came up short. They came up and hurried to the line of scrimmage, and Wyoming area wasn't set. They uh, were a yard off the football, and the sneak had it easily, but the play call that you talked to that you said we can make this go was there as well. They didn't quite execute it. Alex Forrest hurrying it, realizing how open the receiver was, knowing they only needed inches, kind of poofed it out there one-handed, didn't put enough on. Beckhorn, even with the dive, doesn't come up with it. And a disastrous end. 7-11 remaining in the third quarter as Rodney gets the call, tries the left side, and J.J. Snyder, the first one there to meet him. 6-3, Wyoming area leads Berwick. As both teams going for it in fourth down, their first possession of the second half, and both coming up short as we have an injury timeout on the field. Can't catch the number. Wyoming area suffered a number of injuries. We'll have to see when they sit this fellow up. It's not Darren Rodney who we had worried about who had carried that, but someone around the play. Again, frustrations continuing for Berwick. They had a play call that surely would have worked. Beckhorn just needed to make the catch, but the ball, he had no chance. The ball came up well (laughs) short. The thing is, Jim, and, and, and you may have seen it, I think any play worked. Uh, Wyoming area was kind of cutting out its own huddle late. They weren't ready. I think they're waiting for the officials to, you know, give a ready for play signal had already been given. They were a good yard off the ball and not in, in football position. So a sneak hat. Again, you have the call and you see and that's there and you go through with the play. But it's always in my mind a little hard to execute the, the toss and the catch than it is to just push behind a big lineman. We have six minutes and 56 seconds remaining in the third quarter play. Burley trailing Wyoming area by a score of six to three. If you're just joining us, the scoring on the first half, one yard touchdown run by Justin Joseph of Wyoming area. And then a bad snap preventing any chance at the extra point. And Berwick in the second quarter with 6.56 to go, getting a 33-yard field goal by Ken Marshman, who's now 3-for-3 in field goal attempts on this young season. And that's how we stand, 6-3. As they're getting that player to his feet. 36 is the number. That would be... Rossini, he was at the fullback position that time. He is their place kicker. He also plays on defense. And they're going to help him off. He's not putting any weight on that right leg. So give these Warriors credit. Obviously, they've been aided by Berwick mistakes, but uh, they've had a number of key injuries in this game and have hung in there and played it tough. And after this injury timeout, they will have a second down and nine at their own 44-yard line. And Berwick has to continually regroup after their own mistakes, after they don't finish drives or convert on fourth down when they do take that gamble. And mentally, that's hard. You know, sometimes you say it's not our day. It's bad mojo. And you got to fight through that. You have a superior team. You can look at the talent. You look at, can look at the stats. When you don't make the mistakes, you should be able to take it to this team. Here come the Warriors from their own 44-yard line. The sophomore, Dominic DeLuca, at the quarterback controls awaiting the shotgun snap with a slot to the right side. And a man in motion, it's Minichello taking the jet sweep. Minichello has some room, and then he is cut down in the open field. Boy, it looked like he had something going. Tegan Wilk with a big hit in the open field. 
brings him down at the 48. They picked up four. It's going to bring up a third down and five. Trittini gave him a very nice block on the cornerback, so he was able to get inside the containment. But Wilk is so aggressive from his safety position, he came up very well and made the solo tackle in open field. Third and five, DeLuca went to the sideline, got the play from head coach Randy Spencer. He's done that all evening long. Here's the third down. Slot to the left. Minichello, wide to the right, comes in motion, a fake to him. DeLuca back to throw, big pressure, gets the pass away, incomplete. On target, but Evan Klinger in the secondary knocks it away from the intended receiver. That was the tight end, Derek Ambrosino. And so fourth down and five. They faked the punt last time. We'll see if uh, they have another one in them. Short end of five, where a penalty would give him this. Berwick has to be careful not to jump offside. Get the ball back cleanly, and there's a penalty flag. Berwick, in my mind, did not move. If anything, maybe the center flinched his fingers before the snap. And it is a legal procedure against Wyoming area. Berwick's also had trouble in fielding punts, Jim. They've let some bounce that should have been caught. Uh, the rolls have hurt them. Then they let one bounce and tried to pick it up on the roll and lost it. That was the first turnover of the season for the Bulldogs as DeLuca's high, high punt is fair caught by Tegan Wilk down around the Berwick 30-yard line. The Bulldogs get it again with 5.47 to go in the third and Wyoming area continuing to lead this one by a score of 6-3. to three. I'm still with you in the heavy dose of Evan Klinger, Jim, of getting the running going. Inside the tackles, they've been able to dominate. They have the size mismatch. No one's tougher than Evan Klinger in running with the ball. I'd like to see that established, but it has to start with a clean snap. It has to start with clean timing with everybody, not just the center. Can they do it? Joey Lynn in as a blocking back to the right. Out of the pistol, Force awaits the shotgun snap. Klinger behind him. Klinger gets the call, looks for room, has some, hit hard as he gets over the 30. Out to the 33. Four yards on the first down carry for Evan Klinger. Justin Joseph hit on the stop, second down and six. Berwick doesn't huddle, gets a quick play. They'll go up tempo, try to fatigue people, and it's a good strategy with a lot of two-way players in Wyoming area. Force drops the ball, has to go back and try to get it, and I don't know if he did. The oh. scramble is on around the 15-yard line. It'll be Wyoming area. I think they're the only ones there. What for what player trying to fight underneath, but no, there is the signal. And Alex Force just dropped the football. Yep. He got the snap cleanly is running to his right and just dropped the ball. He took it. It was a good snap. Bell tied. He kind of uh, went into a little motion where he swung the ball a little bit. And it swung backward as he lost it. Uh, you know, tried to pick it up and make something happen. It ends up disastrous as he bats away from him. Then he loses possession. The ultimate nightmare. Yeah, just, just, it's been that kind of a night. Damon Barheit on that recovery for the Warriors who have it at the Berwick 15-yard line. The call goes to Rodney up the middle. He's got some running room. He's inside the 10 and down to the 9-yard line. Strong run by Darren Rodney who was injured in the first half. We didn't expect to see him again in this game, but ran hard there. Seven yards to the 8-yard line, second down and three. Momentum means a lot, not just the team uh, that, that's benefiting by the momentum change. But when you lose that momentum, when you make bad plays, you yourself as a defense can devolve and play poorly. Second and three Wyoming area from the Berwick eight-yard line. Rodney again. Rodney off the left side. This time very little. Maybe a yard in the play before he's knocked back. Clock running 429 to go in the third. Berwick trailing Wyoming area 6-3. And the Warriors with a chance for more. No gain to the eight-yard line. Then Peck in on that last stop for the Bulldogs. Here's a third down and three for the Warriors. Four down territory. Yep. Rossini there 
place kicker who got hurt on that last series. And they have it, a third and three for the Berwick eight. They had a bad snap also on the one attempt at place kick, so it's not a confident kicking game where you think field goal. Maruk is the fullback. Toss sweep right side to Rodney, trying to turn the corner. Berwick does a great job of running it down. Jimmy Legrand coming from behind. He got maybe a yard on the play, maybe not. And a great of a fourth down call. They're marking it at the eighth. So it is fourth and three at the eight yard line. One of the biggest plays of the game coming. Super play by Jimmy Legrand. He's opposite the play. They're diving right. He's on the opposite defensive end. Came in and grabbed the man by the waist and pulled him back, recognizing he doesn't want to drive him forward for yardage. Here we go. Fourth and three Warriors from the Berwick eight-yard line. Slot to the right. Wide receiver left, and we are going to have a timeout call. We'll keep it here. Wyoming area using their second timeout. Randy Spencer knows that this is a huge play in this game. It's as huge as it gets. I don't think you rethink the field goal situation. You might have talked to that injured kicker and say, how's it feel? But I just don't think, you know, there's times as a coach you're not confident that the field goal is going to be the play. That you feel you have a better chance of gaining three yards with your offense than you do in making the field goal. And, of course, the points would be more. I think you think, how do you use Minichello? But Berwick knows that, too. Wide side of the field will be to the left, so if you're trying to do some sort of a rollout, the quarterback's going uh, in his less dominant side, hard of the roll left, throw with the right hand. And is it even a throwing down? Berwick has stuffed the last couple runs and played very aggressive defensively. I think you look finesse. Of course, the trapping game has some finesse in it as well. They didn't like the matchups they saw in that formation. They'll come out with a different look. Nikonkello looks to be isolated as the receiver on the right side. Here we go. Fourth and three. Wyoming area at the Berwick eight-yard line following their timeout. Warriors looking to add to a 6-3 lead. 3-10 to go third quarter. Dominic DeLuca has Nikonkello in front of him. Gives it to Minichella, who wants to throw the football. There's nothing there. Now he throws to a wide open DeLuca for a touchdown. They toss the ball, the jet sweep to Minichello. He looked like he was sweeping the left side, wanted to throw to that side, turns, and finds DeLuca wide open to the right for the score. Little pass. Looked like he was going to try to sweep. He sold it well. But by design, it was going to be a pass, and he backed up. However, he did look to his own left side, to receivers in the end zone. But they were covered. The desperation pass is going back to the quarterback, who kept his head, continued his roll away from the play. And that, uh, I don't believe by design. Two-point conversion coming. Rolling left as DeLuca fires deep in the end zone, has his man for the two-point conversion. It's Eric Eslick, Shane Eslick, Jim, number 15, the tight end. Momentum certainly has changed, and they're playing on that. Berwick with its great defense, unable to stop a trick play, and now the standard offense allows for two more. Time out on the field. Three minutes remaining third quarter. Wyoming area 14 and Berwick 3. You're listening to Bulldogs football and classic rock 103.5. Neighbor Fence Company has fencing for where you want it. Serving Columbia, Montour, and Luzerne Counties. Neighbor Fence provides top quality residential and commercial fencing. Vinyl, chain link, wood, aluminum, and ornamental fencing. Plus, vinyl railing and specialty products. Neighbor Fence Company, 1140 State Route 239 in Wapwalpin. Call 570-752-4423 or visit them online at NeighborFenceCompany.com. Neighbor Fence Company is a proud sponsor of local youth athletic teams. When the music stops... That's football. This is Berwick football coach Frank Sheptock. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg, and Greater Hazelton 103.5. Wyoming area looking to knock off Berwick here tonight in the Warriors' home opener, and they lead the Bulldogs 14-3. 
as they take advantage of another Berwick mistake. The first half, he got a touchdown after Berwick muffed a punt. This half, they get a touchdown after Berwick just dropped the football. And now, the kickoff coming, I believe that's Donovan O'Boyle going to kick it off. The regular kicker injured. The kick skitters along the turf. Picked up by Alex Parks. Parks with the return to the 34-yard line. So that's where Berwick will put it in play, and they've got work to do. Trailing 14-3 with 2.55 remaining. Andy, getting back to the touchdown play, is there any way that that play was not designed for Minichello to throw to DeLuca? The only I, reason I'm saying that yeah. is DeLuca was looking to the left side. Was he just selling yeah. it by looking that way? No, I, I think he was not. I think he was an emergency receiver. I think it's get the ball, see if he can run it in, then back up, and we'll find people in the end zone on our near side. One was covered, the other covered. He decides he's going to change direction. I think the play designs for the quarterback to be the third or fourth option, a last option, throw it up, what the heck, and it worked for them. Berwick from their 34-yard line. Play action, the pass is tipped and incomplete. Getting a big hand on it and knocking it down for Wyoming area. is Cameron Carr. So it's a second down and 10 for Berwick at the 34. And Berwick has to get all that out of their minds. There certainly is enough time with an entire quarter to go to get two touchdowns. Its offense can do it, but it has to stop the mistakes, and it's got to believe it can do it. Cameron Carr, the tallest of these defensive linemen at 6'4", as the call goes to Evan Klinger, and Klinger with a nice effort over the 40 and spins out to the 43-yard line. Yep. 126 yards now on the game for Evan Klinger, and I don't know if they've stopped him sure yet. We said kept feeding him the ball, go with the simplified offense. Third and one. Klinger the call. Has the first down. Over the Berwick 45, out to the 46-yard line. Good awareness of down and distance. He knew he needed the inches. He was going to make sure he was going to get that. Tried to smash right over the left guard, saw it wasn't there. Half a little juke to the left and a dive into the opening. Make sure he got the chains. Tegan Wilk wide to the left side. Alex Force out of the gun. Clinger to his left. Beckhorn is lined up to the right. He comes in motion at half moon. Back to throw. Looking long for Tegan Wilk. Incomplete. Trattini all over him down at the 20 yard line. There is no such thing in high school football as face guarding. If there were, (laughs) that's about as good as you can get. Yeah, number 17, he was playing there. And uh, Trattini had his back to the play the entire time. And it basically hits him in the back where Keegan Wilk has no way of getting to the football. Second and 10, Bulldogs from their 46. Force out of the gun, has the snap, looking to throw, fires too high. Ten for Tegan Wilk at the 46-yard line. Now it's third down and ten. Yeah, yeah, it's a team that can throw. They've had good passing numbers through the year. Competent in that part of the game. I think it's push comes to shove. I think you want to physically dominate. Now in third and ten, you're going to be hesitant to run. I look at running my quarterback. Quarterback draw. He's been effective in open field, and you might be able to sell that. Bulldogs, third and 10 at their 46. Norse lines up on a wing to the left. A snap goes over the head of Force. It's picked up by Klinger. Evan Klinger will get about a yard off the right side. Another huge mistake by the Bulldogs. A full moon? (laughs) You're going to have to explain it all to me. Evan Force looked like he was looking for the ball. It wasn't that bad. It was high, helmet high. You have impeded vision wearing a helmet. It looked like he he thought he knew it was coming. Good thing Evan Klinger was back there aside of him to make the recovery. So again, the Bulldogs stopped themselves with mistakes. And Alex Sharkusky will be back to kick it away. Minichello and Williams deep for the Warriors. Wyoming area not looking to pressure. Long snap. High, Cherkusky goes back, gets it, gets the kick away. Line drive kick, fair catch call by Minichello at about the 26-yard line. So that's where the Warriors will put in play in their own territory. Just 150 remaining this third quarter. 
in Wyoming area, leading Berwick 14-3. to Berwick's got to strap it on defensively. As strong as this defense has looked throughout the season, they need a three and out. Yeah, they've made it to where this team has you know, more limited weapons with some of the injuries and people who've been out in the course of this game. you got to make the good, hard stops, make hits for negative yardage, and force a punt three downs. First and ten for the Warriors at their 26. They move from our left to our right in this third quarter. Millikella winds up behind DeLuca, or to his right, I should say. DeLuca back to throw, throws the other way. Has a completion down that sideline, getting away down that sideline, all the way out over the 42-yard line. Robert Torcini made the catch, I believe. And a flag, and it might be a face mask. Fake screen right, throw screen left. Berwick had a man read it. Came up, dove at the man in the backfield, had the ankles, but the man kicked away. Now that man's not there to stop the run downfield with the blockers in front. Berwick fortunate to get a man to stop it from going for the touchdown. But uh, on his tackle, was there a penalty? Five yards. Apparently not five. So inadvertent face pass. And it will be first and ten for the Warriors. Eleven penalties against Berwick now. From the 48-yard line, slot to the right side, eye formation. Call goes to Rodney, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. I think it was Jimmy Legrand who got across there from his defensive end position. It is. He is the first one to get to Rodney for no gain. Second down and 10. Wyoming area at their 48-yard line. Yeah, he can give up one play, but you got to string three together and force the punt. Would have been nice if you did it when they were back on their 30, but now you have to do it as they're here near midfield. Uh, the defense just has to step it up and force that punt. When the offense gets it, it can't hurt themselves. Less than a minute here in this third quarter. Minichello is in a slot to the right. Brian Williams outside of him. Second down call, toss sweep right side to Darren Rodney. Looking for room. And boy, what a hit in the open field by Teagan Wilk. He'll lose yardage on the play. Came up and played it like a linebacker from whatever look. I think Frank Sheptock is aware that his counterpart, Spencer, wants to run the football, take time off the clock, and that's, that's the big bulk of their game. Cheated a little bit on the defensive call to bring Tegan Wilk up like a linebacker. He made them pay. Wyoming area, I think, can run this clock out in this third quarter as frustration continues for Berwick. They have the stats. The scoreboard tells another story. Three in the books. Wilding area, 14. Berwick, three. You're listening to Bulldogs football and classic rock, 103.5. Hogs Hollow Saloon has rolled out the new menu in their daily special. Hogs Hollow Mondays, Clam Night. Hogs Hollow Tuesday, Slider Night. Hogs Hollow Wednesday, Wing Night and Boston Fisher Homemade Pierogies. Hogs Hollow Thursday, 995 Half Rack of Ribs and Chef's Dinner Choice. Hogs Hollow Friday, Poor Man's Lobster and Prime Rib. Hogs Hollow Saturday, Seafood Pasta and Sunday, Chicken and Waffles. Drink specials include the Orange Crush. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Hogs Hollow Saloon, Route 93 in Berwick and Orangeville. Find specials on Facebook. Berwick Bulldog Football. In the fourth quarter, Coughlin and Crestwood are tied at 14. Sealand Grove leads from Oakham 20 to 0, and Dallas leads Pittston 24 to 7 in the fourth. I'm Ben Willis for Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg, and Greater Hazelton 103.5. Last season, Berwick started the season in a rush, winning handily in their first two weeks. Then Wyoming area came to Crispin Field, set the Bulldogs back 34-20. History may repeat itself tonight unless Berwick makes a comeback. Bulldogs looking good in the first two weeks of the season, coming in 2-0. and And Wyoming area right now leading Berwick 14-3. Three quarters in the books. We start this final period. The Warriors with the ball just on their side of midfield, facing a third down and 13. Big play for them, but with the lead, they don't have to take high risks. They don't convert. They punt it away. And then they see what Berwick can do. Keep your eye on Minichello. He's the key man, isolated here on the left side. Single receiver. DeLuca under center on third and 13. And inside handoff to Minichello. He's tripped up. 
looked like J.J. Snyder got him by the yep. ankles. He made the great penetration. I tell you what, he's been in on a number of plays tonight. Fourth down and the punt team on for Wyoming area. Minichello on a little scissors play. Cheated in a little bit like a deep wing back. Comes toward the right side of the offense behind the trap block. But the nose guard penetrating. Whips an arm at his ankles and knocks him down. Tegan Wilk, Evan Klinger deep for Berwick. Wyoming area getting a man on late. Now they've used two of their timeouts. That man gets Three, in there. Two, one, buzz, delay. That now, is. Well, it's, that's not a killer from where no. they are, midfield. And they no. did well not to use the timeout there. And same with down and distance. It's not going to change the fact whether you're going to punt or not. You would have liked to save the five yards, but the way Berwick's been going in this game, tend to give them five. DeLuca dropped the snap and picked it up, get the kick away, and Wilk from the 25-yard line. Tegan Wilk to the 30, looking for room to the 40, still on his feet, spinning. Good effort by him. Out to the 40 seven yard line there is a flag down the far side of the field on the far side he caught it on the far side immediately came to the center of the field i thought he'd continue all the way here to the near bench but he turned back against the grain got a little yardage and fought now the only thing the defense can do over there is uh fight with somebody so it's going to be a hold against berwick and the fine return will be penalized from the point of the hold and boy penalties mounting Berwick had 12 in the victory over Dallas last Friday. They now have 12 in this game with still 10.58 to go. Oh, they're killers. They're killers. Change of field position is dramatic. Good 20 yards of difference. You had momentum after a fine return. You know, and then the, the mental part of the momentum, you know, where it's okay, we've made the play. We can do it now like every time they make a play there's a flag Bulldogs moving from our left to our right in this final period first and 10 throw 29 they trail 14 to 3 Evan Klinger on the call tries the left side he's been effective for most of the night not this time good defense by the Warriors yeah the whole play just wasn't quite in sync 126 yards on the night and now you wonder do you have the patience to continue with the success of Evan Klinger and is the momentum that's certainly going Wyoming area's way, you know, building up in their defense where they're going to key on him a little more. Second and nine, slot to the right. Force gives the ball to Klinger again. This time a little more room, but not much. Over the 30 to about the 34-yard line. Third down coming for the Bulldogs. You know, with under 10 minutes to go in the game. It's almost a time where you have to convert. You do. 0 for 5 passing in this half for Alex Force and a passing down. Third and 5. Beckhorn in motion. They're going to option right. Force keeps the football tripped up very, very close to the first down. We'll see where they mark it. I thought he had it. I thought he fell forward across the 40-yard line. That would give it to him, but did his knee hit before? Nope, they put it on the 40, they moved to James. He was coming to the right, and the option man was Damon Beckward, who was motioning toward him and then reversed his field to show himself as a pitch man. A nice look to that, and Alex Force always seems to choose the right lane. They have a stoppage in a conference. Umpire, one of the linesmen. Never something you want to see after you get a first down. No. No. Jay Rowan's going to stop play. Can the clock be wrong? Could it be a sideline warning? No, they're looking up here at the press box. They're waving to me, Jim. <laughs> now they're trying to communicate. Their coaches would be on the other side. 9.47 is what's showing on the clock, if that's an issue. Uh, they're, they're talking the wrong direction. They're over there. It, it, it's interesting that the coach who's come over to the track had the headset on. And he's talking to the side with the Berwick coaches 
in a, a streaming radio. I don't know what he could be talking. Now he's taking the headset off so even his own coaches don't hear. The only thing I could think is maybe someone saw a laser pointer or something in the stands, Jimmy, or some sequin or some mirror, and it might be something they're, they're conveying into the fan section. I think that's what it is. It made no sense the other way. Well, we're ready to go. Berwick at their own 40-yard line. 9.47 to go in the game. Bulldogs trail 14-3. to Slot to the right. Backhorn in that half-moon motion. The handoff goes to Evan Klinger, and he trips and falls after a short gain to the 42, maybe the 43-yard line. Tried to cut it inside a little bit because he was going to meet with resistance there. I think even if he didn't go down, he was going to be stopped uh, for relatively short yardage. Second and eight, Bulldogs. Pretty much a must-score possession for them. They trail 14-3. to three. Force has the shotgun snap. Play action. Back to throw. Here comes a big pass rush. He's in trouble. He's got to be sacked way back in the 34-yard line. He had been getting fine protection. But he was there for that 1,001, 1,002, and at 1,003, here it comes. Defensive end on the near side breaks free and pressures. He's been able to duck under and get away. But then two more men break free, and he can't avoid them. Shane Eslick gets the sack for Wyoming area. Third and 16, desperation time for the Bulldogs. Here in the fourth quarter, Force has the snap. Back to throw. Looking, looking. Nothing there. Now he rolls right. Fires across his body. The pass too high. And it's incomplete. Had a man open at the 47. That was uh, Denver Noor. But the pass sailed on Alex, who was rolling to his right. And the punt team will come on. Wyoming area has been playing a little safer when the ball's being punted to them. Early in the game, they overloaded the left side, and they had success in ruffling the punter and putting pressure on him. Now more concerned with the notion of a fake punt. They just want to field this cleanly and let their offense take time off the clock. Alex Sharkusky awaiting the snap. He's back at the 20-yard line to do the punting. And he gets the kick away. Sails it, fielding at the 37-yard line. It's been a Kellogg's room down the sideline over midfield to the 45, the 40, and forced out of bounds. There is a flag down on the play. He gets to the Berwick 35-yard line. Mark Anthony Minichello, probably the most dangerous athlete that Wyoming area has, made a terrific return on that line drive punt by Sharkusky. We'll check the flag. It'll be a hold against Wyoming area, but well into the return, only about six yards from where he's forced out of bounds. So he's still going to come up with some nice positives by that return. It'll come to the Berwick 47-yard line. And that's where Wyoming area will put in play first and ten. Any points on their part can just about put this one away. They lead 14 to 3, 8 14 remaining. Burke needs a turnover. Course of the season. They've had three interceptions, two fumble recoveries. They were plus five coming into the game. Need to force something now. Slot to the right, eye formation. From the Bulldog 47, DeLuca tosses the ball to Darren Rodney. Rodney off the left side will pick up about two. Second down and eight coming, but time is on the side of Wyoming area. Joey Lynn scraping down the line. Billing keeps it to a two-yard gain. But as you mentioned, Jim, kept himself in bounds, kept that clock running. Second down and seven. Donovan O'Boyle enters the backfield for Wyoming area replacing Darren Rodney not a big fan of that pitch on that sweep as he pitches it almost straight back to the man coming at him near side from the Berwick 44 DeLuca toss sweep right side to O'Boyle looking for room breaks through and gets down to the 41 yard line good effort by him looked like Berwick had that defended very well but he they, got something out of it, now it's third down. They got to finish though, Jim. Their arm tackles, and there they're, they're, he's sliding through. It wasn't such a powerful run that uh, he couldn't be contained. Berwick has to get desperate, finish the play. Each player's got to say, this is up to me. 
I have to make the play and not leave it to somebody else. That was a little lazy in the tackling. Third and four. Warriors at the Bulldog 41-yard line. Slot to the left eye formation. DeLuca under center. Gives the ball off to a boil. Tries the right side and nothing doing. Berwick gets the stop they needed to have. Joe Norse among the people into the play for the Bulldogs. So here's a fourth down play coming for Wyoming area. And mass substitutions look like they're going to put it away. It's the safe way to play. It's the winning strategy. But I thought they were going to punt once before when they did fake it. Don't see that here. I'm pretty sure you punt this. Berwick struggled in fielding punts throughout this uh, this day. And when they add some kick returns, they've uh, seen penalties pull them back. Well, this is the best place you can imagine for a fake punt, though. Fourth and four at the Berwick 40. DeLuca is standing back at his 47-yard line. And a whistle and a stoppage. Linesman pointing to something almost off the field up to our left now bringing it to the attention this game has been a competitive hard hitting one but it has not been a Rembrandt no <laughs> it's been a lot of mistakes and stoppages like this uh, don't help I, I the don't. stoppage before when I think it might have been someone shining a light or a mirror irritating somebody I don't even know what that means, Jimmy. They gave us a arms across the chest as if you're in the casket symbol. Now for those who are officials and understand it, it's a five-yard penalty against Wyoming area. I don't know that signal. It doesn't hurt from where they are. No, but I, I'm curious. I'll yell up to Alex if he knows. And it was a long time. a long time and they're still talking about it well they're not going to change their minds I boy there are no early dinner plans for this crew and you know they have the guy on the headset looking up this way again come on guys let's go Frankie Galicki <laughs> come on get him moving well, he's not the referee. And just tell him to snap the ball. Jay Rowan is the referee. Yes, you got to make everything clear. Didn't make it clear to me. I still don't know the penalty. DeLuca back at the 43-yard line. Gets the kick away. Line drive kick to the far side. Fielded it. Wilk. Is Wilk. Looks for room. The 40, the 45. Gets a great block. And he's down the far sideline. The 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, and he's in for a score. There are no flags. Berwick gets the huge play they needed, and they're back in it with 5.43 to go. They needed it. Deacon Wilk did field it cleanly. A little bit out in front of him at the knees. A little awkwardness in it, but he was sort of half scatting the field. Went up his own sideline on the far left side. Weaved his way with blockers, and then amazing speed from about midfield on as he pulled away from the crowd. 14-9. What's that little ticket say? Kick this PAT? Well, I think it's debatable. You know, you yeah. Two, you pull within three. Field but they goal are to going tie. To, they are going to kick it. Evan Klinger will hold for Ken Marshman. They're no. lining up to kick it. Electrifying punt return Both. by Tegan Wilk has put Berwick back in this game with still time remaining snap placement kick is up and the kick is good time on the field 543 to go in the game wyoming area 14 berwick 10 you're listening to bulldogs football and classic rock 103.5 the mayo funeral homes located at 110 chestnut street in berwick and 77 main street in shikshini are proud sponsors of berwick bulldog football the Mayo Funeral Homes, serving all faiths, makes it easier for those you love with prearranged funeral counseling, insurance, and pre-financed funerals. Mayo Funeral Homes also offers expert guidance in both traditional and cremation services. Mayo Funeral Homes, perfection in every detail. When the music stops, 
That's football. This is Berwick football coach Frank Sheptock. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg, and Greater Hazelton 103.5. Earlier in the game, Berwick sophomore Tegan Wilk muffed a punt and led to an eventual score by Wyoming area. He just made up for that with an electrifying 75-yard punt return touchdown. The Bulldogs back in it. They trail 14 to 10, 5:43 to play. As Ken Marshman, following his extra point, will kick it off. His kick. Very, very high, and Minichello will field at the 11-yard line. Minichello looks for room, tries to bounce it outside, and he gets over the 20 to about the 24-yard line. Wyoming area will take over the football. The big defensive series for the Bulldogs. There is a flag down the play. At the point of the tackle, but I didn't see any face masking, although things get mixed in. Wait, Minichello's elusive. Two people seem to have him cornered where he caught that. He was able to sidestep and break to the left. And Berwick had him penned in again. And it's at the point of the tackle where we're seeing the flag live. Now, if it's a face mask, you call it. If it's a hold, you call it. If it's a clip, you call it. Let's call it, guys. Someone dropped the flag. You know what the penalty is. Another conference. It's, it's big. Now they're waving it away. Waving it away. Now, why drop it? <laughs> I don't see anything that, you know, could have been, you know, sometimes a tip ball takes away pass interference. You can wave those away. That one I don't understand. Here we go. First and 10, Wyoming area. Throw 24-yard line. 5.33 to play. They lead Berwick 14-10. to 10. Slot to the left in an eye formation. And DeLuca gives to Rodney off the right side. He stopped right at the line of scrimmage. May have not got there. Good defense by that front for the Bulldogs. It'll be second down and 10. Joe Norse coming from his defensive end position. Change momentum with that punt return, and all of a sudden the defense is even more alive. An aggressive pursuit to the ball, squelching that right at the line of scrimmage. Two more, and you force the punt. You'll still have about three and a half minutes to make things go. Berwick, two timeouts remaining. They need a stop. High formation behind DeLuca. Gives the ball to Rodney. Rodney is wrapped up after a gain of maybe a yard off that left side. Jimmy Legrand from his defensive end position crashing down. And now a huge play coming. Third down and a long nine for Wyoming area with four and a half minutes to play. And Berwick trailing 14 to 10. Passing down. They have two completes and three attempts this half. One, the trick play where Minichello took the ball and threw back to the quarterback. The other was sort of a double screen to Trattini. So the standard passing game's been covered well. Look for a back of the play play. Slot to the left, eye formation. Rolling out is DeLuca. Steps up into it. He is hit and sacked. Ball, ball is loose at the 21-yard line. DeLuca was hit and sacked. Making the hit was Jimmy Legrand. The ball... On the turf, officials giving no Wyoming indication. Area Wyoming area has the football. 4.03 to go. Legrand with the big play for the Bulldogs on third down. Almost a huge play, but Wyoming area able to get on the ball. DeLuca shaken up a bit. I think he is the one that recovered. And he's also the punter. But you can't be shaken up too much. If you're back there with cobwebs and miss this long snap, you're going to have problems. Tegan Wilk, who returned that last punt 75 yards, is deep along with Evan Klinger. DeLuca is back at the 8-yard line of Wyoming area, awaiting the snap. Long count. Snap is perfect. DeLuca's kick is away as a low-line drive. Takes a good roll where Wyoming area is concerned. But it goes out of bounds at the Berwick 48-yard line. So here's the situation. 3.29 to play. Berwick with two timeouts remaining. They have it at their own 48-yard line, and they trail Wyoming area 14-10. to Running game's been successful. 0 for 6 passing in this half. They have a big size advantage over a bit of a beaten uh, beaten up Wyoming area who's been suffering injuries throughout this game. A lot of two-way players. 
I think you're going to see Berwick try to go right at them. First and ten for the Bulldogs. It's Damon Beckhorn who's awaiting the shotgun snap. He fakes the ball to Claire. He keeps the football himself. He's inside the 45, the 40, the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, and tripped up from behind inside the 10-yard line. Beckhorn just brought down from behind by Dominic DeLuca saving the touchdown, but Berwick threatening to take the lead with 3.19 to go. In the shotgun, he takes the snap as the Wildcat, gives a little fake of a sweep to a half-moon motion, and then straight up the middle. Great blocking gives him the seam, and then the speed splits the rest of the defenders. 44 yards on the run. First and goal, Berwick at the 8-yard line. Beckhorn will take the snap again. Fakes to clear. Keeps the football off the left side. Into the end zone for a touchdown. David Beckhorn in from 8 yards out. Berwick has their first lead of the night with 3-0-2 to play. Huge. Huge. Built on momentum from the previous punt return. Able to make things happen. Damon Beckhorn in the Wildcat. We were told we'd see it. That electrifying player needs his touches. After the first huge burst over 40 yards, I thought they'd rest him a little. But he feels, I don't need it. Give me that ball, coach. And he Mar- takes it in. Marshman with the extra point attempt. The hole, the kick is up, and the kick is good. Tied on the field. 3.02 to go in the football game. Berwick 17, Wyoming Area 14. You're listening to Bulldogs Football and Classic Rock 103.5. Anderson Ice Company, located on the corner of 2nd Street and Oak Street in Berwick, has been serving Berwick and the surrounding community since 1975. Anderson Ice keeps you cool and your beverages cooler with cubed, crushed, or block ice. Anderson Ice is now offering dry ice upon request. Be sure to visit your local convenience store and stock up on Anderson Ice before any family celebration or holiday. Anderson Ice Company, on the corner of 2nd Street and Oak Street in Berwick. When the music stops, that's football. This is Berwick football coach Frank Sheptock. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg and Greater Hazleton 103.5. Berwick's touchdown drive. Two plays, 52 yards. Both runs by David Beckhorn out of Wildcat. 17-14, 17-14, Berwick, 3-0-2 to play. Ken Marshman to kick it off for the Bulldogs. Here's the play that scares me, Jim, the kickoff, not Minichello. To the far side at the five-yard line. Here's the return by Trattini, and he's brought down about the 20-yard line. Good kick by Marshman, good coverage by the Bulldogs. Wyoming area, one timeout remaining. Keep your eye on number 10. He is there, Damon Beckhorn. He's the guy who can do it. Be on him a little bit more. The others may move the ball, but they'll move it slowly. Not enough time to establish the drive. The interior can stop it. But keep those safeties a little bit deeper. Don't let the big play hurt you if you're in Berwick's defensive mindset. First and ten. Wyoming area from their 20. DeLuca, the sophomore quarterback, out of the gun. Corey Maruk to his left, in motion. Comes Minichello, a keeper by the quarterback, and he gets off the left side for just two to the 22-yard line. Will Decker in there on the defensive line for Berwick makes the play. Second down and eight. Wyoming area needs to pick up the pace. And here's where you lose out on having the quarterback come to the sideline to get the plays after each play. Because now valuable time is running off. 25 to go. Second and eight. Warriors at their 22 yard line. Trips receivers to the right. And a flag down the play. I think it's too many players, Jim. There's six men in the backfield. You can't have that. So, it should be an illegal five yard, illegal. Uh, not substitution because you have substitute. Yep, five yards it is. Again, keep your eye on Minichello. They used him as the decoy that time. Uh, he scissor action inside, and the quarterback kept it. He's not the dangerous threat. Minichello's the man when they're not decoying with him, and they go in his direction. Second down and 13, Wyoming area. 
back at their 17. 2.05 to play. Berwick clinging to a three-point lead. Minichello comes in motion. A fake jet sweep. They pass it out here to Tortini. He's got running room. And then is hit and dropped at the 25-yard line. Boy, nice tackle in the open field by Evan Klinger. As pretty as you can get. They tried Tortini on a double screen earlier, and it was one of their successful passing plays. Similar look as they tried to get Minichello to distract you the other way. They'll give him about nine yards on that. Third down and five. Five wide receivers. Minichello in motion. He takes the handoff in the jet sweep. Hit behind the line, but breaks free. Comes up short of the first down at the 29-yard line. Good defense by the Bulldogs. Wyoming area will lose their final timeout. We'll keep it here. Will Decker with another play from his position. He'll now go out. Tom Monaco will replace him. Frank Sheptock has shown in early season uses a lot of defensive players. Wyoming area has just used their final timeout. Talk about this fourth and one. 121 remaining. Down in distance might bring Tom Monaco in as well. It's, it's about oh, a foot, six inches that they need. Now the question is, do they commit to go for that with 121? The other option on this play, fake the short yardage and try to go for it all. I don't know if they have the personnel to drive this for 70 yards. I think what you have to do, Andy, <laughs> is in that huddle that they're in right now, say, okay, here's our play for the first down. As soon as this yeah. is over, Dominic, don't come over here to the sideline. Here's, here's the next the play. play. Or you just say, I'm going for it all now when they've crept up the stop. Berwick's not buying it. They're not overplaying the short yardage. They'll give them the first down. They still have four linebackers across, five yards off the ball. Here we go. The Fourth secondary. and one. I formation. Slot to the left. Quarterback keeper by DeLuca. And he gets the first down over the 30 to the 31. Keeps the hopes alive. And... Coaching staff for Wyoming area yelling, get to the line of scrimmage. Again, I'm sure they talked that over in their last huddle. Sticks have not been moved yet. Now they are. 1.17 to go. Wyoming area out of timeouts. Berwick with a three-point lead. DeLuca has the shotgun snap. He's back to throw. He fires quickly to the sideline. He has a man trying to get a bounce across the way. Did he get there? Minichello, I think he did get out. We'll see. Very short gain at any rate. Damon Beckhorn on the stop for the Bulldogs. They mark it at the 33, a pickup of two. Second and eight. Just 109 to play. DeLuca has the snap. Rolls to his left. Looking, looking. Big pass rush by Monaco. Now he fires the sideline in and out of the hands of a receiver at the 40-yard line. Good throw by DeLuca. Brian Williams couldn't bring it in. Clock stops with 102 to go. Third down and eight Warriors at their 33. Yeah, DeLuca did everything he could. Quarterback on a designed roll to the left, squaring the shoulders and spitting that ball out to a man who had broken free at about a nine-yard depth. Now, Berwick's going to keep things in front of them. They're, they're not quite in a prevent, but their safeties are very aware. No one beats anyone deep, and keep that angle. They're playing five under and two deep. Now they'll try to lock on with their people on all the receivers and still keep two safeties. Third and eight. Trips to the right. Wide receiver left. DeLuca fires a quick out to the right. To a back who wants to throw the football. Never gets a chance as he's brought down back at the 26-yard line. Ryan Lawball with the play. A quick out to Barak. Looked like he wanted to throw it downfield. Never got a chance. Fourth and long. Clock running. 43 seconds to play. Wyoming area has to convert. DeLuca back there. Running with the football. He's going to be sacked back at the 27-yard line. Eric Montez in to make the play for the Bulldogs, and that should do it with 34.8 seconds remaining. Berwick overcomes 12 penalties, two turnovers, with a big fourth quarter comeback. A couple of huge plays, one by Tegan Wilk, one by Damon Beckhorn, and the Bulldogs are going to win for the third straight game, and they are going to get the program's 800th all-time victory.
Maybe one of the ugliest, but a win <laughs> is a win, Jimmy. And they're in the victory formation. For those who don't understand, it's the kneel down situation. Quarterback will be right under the center with two line, uh, two backs aside of him. Alex Horst will take that knee. Clock will wind down. What a tough, tough loss for Wyoming area. Berwick needed something big to happen. Tegan Wilk provided that. And then Damon Beckhorn with two runs out of the Wildcat. One of 44, one of eight yards for the touchdown. The clock winds down. Berwick gets the program's 800th all-time win. They stay perfect on this season at 3-0. The final score, Berwick, 17. Wyoming area, 14. We'll be back with the scoring, scores from other games, and stats. You're listening to Bulldogs football on Classic Rock 103.5. Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas of Berwick, are your roofing experts for Luzerne, Columbia, and Montour counties. With 26 years of experience and great rates, why go anywhere else when Red's Roofing will get the job done right for your decks, siding, or roofing, specializing in metal and rubber shingles. Most roofing work is done in one day. So remember the name, Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas. Call Red's Roofing, 752-4351. Owner Harry Titus, a proud supporter of the Berwick football team. Choose with confidence, the Medicine Shop. At the Medicine Shop Pharmacy, located at the corner of 9th and Pine Streets in Berwick, caring goes beyond the prescriptions. Discover the one-on-one -on -one customer service and dedication that makes caring part of the culture at the Medicine Shop in Berwick. Stock up on everything you need to keep you and your family healthy all year long. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy, located on the corner of 9th and Pine Streets in Berwick, where caring goes beyond the prescriptions. The Mayo Funeral Homes, located at 110 Chestnut Street in Berwick and 77 Main Street in Chicxinny, are proud sponsors of Berwick Bulldog Football. The Mayo Funeral Homes, serving all faiths, makes it easier for those you love with prearranged funeral counseling, insurance, and pre-financed funerals. Mayo Funeral Homes also offers expert guidance in both traditional and cremation services. Mayo Funeral Homes, perfection in every detail. Berwick Bulldog Football. Take a look at the high school football scoreboard tonight. Finals. Scranton Prep over Lake Cleveland, 42-0. Dallas over Pittston, 38-7. Southern Columbia over Mount Carmel, 29-7. Central Columbia over Tawanda, 35-6. Danville over Montoursville, 7-0. Bluesburg over Warrior Run tonight, 62-6. In the fourth quarter, Williamsport leads Hazelton area, 28-26. Coughlin leads Crestwood in the fourth, 27 to 14. Sealand throw leads Shamoka 20 to 0 in the fourth. And Delaware Valley leads Wyoming Valley West 35 25 in the fourth quarter. I'm Ben Willis, Classic Rock 103.5. Berwick, Bloomsburg, and Greater Hazelton 103.5. Twelve penalties and two turnovers and numerous other mistakes. Usually not a formula for victory, but Somehow Berwick managed here tonight as they come from behind in the fourth quarter to defeat Wyoming area and stay unbeaten. The final score, Berwick 17 and Wyoming area 14. Frustrating first half for the Bulldogs. Five possessions, five times they had the ball in Wyoming area territory, and yet their only points came on a 33-yard field goal by Ken Marshman with 6.56 to go in the half to cut Wyoming area's lead to 6-3. One of Berwick's critical mistakes led to the Wyoming area touchdown in that opening half. Tegan Wilk muffed a punt. The Warriors took over at the Berwick 22-yard line. Great play by sophomore quarterback Dominic DeLuca, who rolled right and hit Mark Anthony Minichello with a 21-yard strike down to the one-yard line. And then when the second quarter began, Justin Joseph got in from the one-yard line for the touchdown. That was the 6-0 lead. Marshman cut it to 6-3. to And again, Berwick at the half had held Wyoming area to 36 yards in total offense, but nine penalties against the Bulldogs, plus their first turnover of the season. And they found themselves trailing 6-3. Things didn't change any in the 
third quarter. Berwick in their own territory. Alex Force took the snap, rolled right, and just dropped the football. Damon Barhide recovered at the 15-yard line of Berwick. Facing a fourth and three at the eight. Wyoming area gave the ball to Minichella on a jet sweep. He rolled left, then turned back to the right and threw an eight-yard touchdown pass to quarterback Dominic DeLuca. DeLuca then throw to Shane Eslick for the two-point conversion. Wyoming area led after three quarters, 14-3. to three. Midway through the fourth quarter, Berwick still making mistakes, still struggling, still trailing 14-3. to three. They needed a huge play. They got it from sophomore Tegan Wilk. He fielded a punt at the Berwick 25-yard line on the far side and raced 75 yards down the sideline for the touchdown. Ken Marshman kicked the extra point. Berwick trailed 14 to 10 with 5:43 to play. Bulldogs needed a three and out on the part of Wyoming area. Their defense was up to the task. Berwick took over at their own 48-yard line. Damon Beckhorn took over as quarterback out of the Wildcat, took the handoff up the middle, went 44 yards to the Wyoming area 8-yard line. On the next play, Beckhorn again, up the gut, this time into the end zone for a score with 3.02 to go. Marshman kicked the extra point. Berwick had their first lead of the night, 17-14. to Bulldogs needed one more stop. They got it. Clock ran out on Wyoming area. And Berwick overcomes all their mistakes, all the adversity, and comes out on top here tonight. Berwick 17 Wyoming area, 14. Stats in tonight's game, Andy Ligny. Now people will see the score and won't understand the way this worked, especially when you do look at the score sheet. Berwick comes out on top in total offense, which is what I keep. 224 yards in offense and gave up just 74. Uh, looking at the job the defense did, they limited Wyoming area to 23 yards rushing on 40 carries. And they held them to 51 yards in the air for their total of 74. Uh, In the air, it it was an interesting game. Uh, Dominic DeLuca in his third game as a starting, well, as a quarterback, second starting, ended up being sacked on three occasions, lost 25 yards in his eight carries overall. And yet I thought he did a very nice job in directing his team. The team ends up with a touchdown reception, but it's not Dom DeLuca throwing it, it's Dom DeLuca receiving it as he flipped the ball out to uh, Minichello, who then scanned the field after faking sweep, looking his own side, and I believe as sort of a, a final option, threw it back to the quarterback who wasn't really expecting it, got it and backed into the end zone. So Minichello, one for one passing, and, uh, Dom DeLuca uh, getting the reception. Uh, overall, the team was 7 of 10 passing, no interceptions, and 51 yards in the air. Minichello more the receiver than the passer. Three catches for a total of 20 yards as Berwick kept in, in front of them. Robert Trattini caught three, total of 17 yards. And they actually tossed one here at the end of the game to him, and he tried to throw it downfield but ended up sacked. But he'll get uh, a pass completion uh, as a receiver on that. Brian Williams had the other catch of 14 yarders, so not a whole lot in the air with 50 yards, but it uh, more than doubles the rushing yards. Berwick held this team to 23 yards rushing on 40 rushing plays. Darren Rodney played hard, hurt partway through, came back in all 14 carries, 23 yards. Corey Maruk started at fullback, did some uh, ball carrying after the injury to Darren Rodney, six carries for 19 for him. Donovan O'Boyle, three carries for six. Justin Joseph was going to be the backup tailback. He ended up a little bit injured, two carries for just two yards. He did have the one-yard touchdown on a counter play. Mark Minichello, they bring him in motion and hand him the ball a number of times. Seven times in all, but Berwick very aware of his number 10 coming across the formation. Seven carries, minus two yards for Minichello. 
and Dominic DeLuca, we mentioned, eight official carries, including the three sacks, minus 25 yards for him. So it looks like dominant defense, 23 yards rushing, 51 in the air, total of 74 yards given up by the Berwick Bulldogs. In their offense, they amassed 196 on the ground, uh, just 32 in the air. The passing game uh, wasn't being called on all that much, and when it was, it uh, wasn't clicking. Uh, Alex Forrest didn't complete a second-half pass, and yet I don't feel he threw poorly. Damon Beckhorn had one catch, but immediately knocked out of bounds. No yards gained on that. Tegan Wilk caught a seven-yard pass as he saw a lot of action at wide receiver in this game. He had a nice 18-yarder uh, called back because of the penalty. Garrett Watts, two uh, sort of short slant patterns, short posts over the middle, one of 15, the other of 10 yards, uh, looked nice. So just four of 16 passing for Berwick and just 32 yards, but 196 net in the running game. They had a positive rushing of 214 and lost 22. Alex Forrest suffered two sacks, uh, lost one as the ball swung out of his hands, running back seven for minus 10. Uh, the team loses 11 on uh, bad snaps and kneel downs. Alex Shrikuski has a puncher forced to run once, two yards on that. Let's look at the real runners, though. Evan Owen, Shoemaker, limited action, five carries, 18 yards, all in the first half. Evan Klinger was approaching 100 yards at halftime, finishes with 16 carries for 129 yards. And then that spark plug, the lightning in a jar, Damon Beckhorn, at halftime, two carries for 13. They plan to get him his touches. Well, in desperation time, when they had to have the touchdown with three and a half minutes left, he went into the Wildcat. A long plus 40-yard burst, followed by an eight-yard touchdown. He finishes the game with four carries for 65 yards. So, numerically, you know, Berwick with impressive numbers. But uh, the depressing number, the number of penalties, and a number of other mistakes, anyone can cost you a ball game. Uh, you mentioned the, you know plays that save the game or a player like Tegan Wilk who wins it for them. But, you know, to a point, everyone wins and everyone loses, Jim. Every effort by, uh, uh, you know, defensive players. We mentioned the strong look that uh, Jimmy Legrand gave them how strong the corners were coming up throughout the game. We've seen key hits by other players. The linemen are invisible. Sometimes they make the mistakes and sometimes they make the play. So whichever way this one ended up, it was going to be team. Some get focused on like a Beckhorn or a Wilk and deserve